A young lady and coming through since that World Championships. For sure. She's full of emotion, she's fiery, and she's just amazing to watch. I've been so impressed with how much she's come on in the lead discipline as well, being a boulder specialist. And Chloe Collier there, I didn't expect her, to be honest, to be in this position now, but what a week she's I at. I would agree with you. She really came in all guns blazing for that boulder event and put in a good performance in lead too. Yeah, Eliska Adamovska on stage, precision. <laughs> I think she's just such a she's a good climber to watch because she has very good technique. She's very precise. She's so pretty. She's like a pretty yes. climber. Yeah, I would agree. There's no very sort of elegant. yeah. There's no extras with her. Yeah. And Jessie Pilts, would it be a combined final without that lady there? What a legend. I think you're right. Jessie is miscombined after Yanya, I'd say. Yeah, she's done well to get this far. And I keep calling it combined, and it says combined on screen, but it's not the combined that we know from the Olympics with minus speed. And that lady, Hannah Moyle, the only German athlete in this final. And again, a great season leading up to this point. Yeah, incredible. She's always showed so much talent and promise, but she's really come into her own this year with medals in Boulder and, yeah, a lead final the other day. Absolutely. And then Yanya Garmbre, I mean, she's got to be the favourite to take victory here today, but she's human she and anything human. can happen. Yeah, she worked just as hard as everyone else to get to this point. Um, and it's a treat for us all to be able to see her and hopefully see her challenged. Absolutely. Well, those are the athletes. And we're starting off with Boulder. And the rules are slightly different. And I know if you're watching at home and you are a, uh, a seasoned climber, you'll be saying, well, the rules have been different all week. Well, they're especially different <laughs> today. <laughs> Including this decibel system, we have two zones in the boulder, but we'll chat about more of that in a minute because we're seeing the athletes presented onto the stage. Molly, what was it like for you when you walked out for that curtain the other day? Oh, it was great. What a backdrop to have. Um, and such an amazing crowd to walk out to. Psyched for absolutely anyone and everyone. And yeah, what you want to see before you pull onto the wall for sure. Yeah, they're standing there in the shade in front of the crowd who have all gathered down the front. They've been sprayed with water by the mascot <laughs> just to keep them cool. Yenya there, uh, she's down as Yevgenia, but she prefers Yenya, so I think we'll maybe stick with that one. Yeah, Yenya to us all. Great to see Ukraine represented. Her teammate Daniel Baldi-Rev winning the uh, speed the other day, which was super emotional for everyone. For sure. Mia Krampel is announced. Along with Jesse Pilts and Yanya Gambra, Olympians, so they're used to this kind of a, a pressure. I chatted to Camilla Moroni's coach the other day. He was in the climbing wall, and he was telling me how he's impressed with her because she's such a good role model for the sport. Yeah. Because she's really lovely, she's really nice, she's super strong, and, yeah. and a good one to look up to. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's so easy to take inspiration from all of these ladies, but Camilla is definitely someone that I look at and think, wow, what an athlete. <laughs> At least get Adam Oscar, her teammate Adam Ondra, who won the lead the other day. She's such a talented athlete in her own right. There is Jessie. I mean, Molly, I feel like I've been watching Jessie for years. I climbing. mean, we she's one year older than me, so I've known her since I was about 12, 13 years old. And yeah, it's always been cool to follow her journey. Adam Oyl taped up on the left arm. She was one of the athletes struggling getting treatment backstage the other day because of cramp or something like that. It was a brutal couple of days. Oh, 100%, especially when you're climbing all of the rounds. Yeah, exactly. And then Yanya, well, she had a hesitation on the women's boulder final. We all thought, oh my goodness, she is human. Is she going to mess it up? And then came back from nothing. I know. It was quite an unexpected start to that boulder final, but... Yanya did what Yanya does and always brought it back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, this is our wall. It's four and a half metres tall. And slightly different from the graphic you're seeing on screen is there's two zones per boulder. The first one worth three points, the second worth six, and then the top is worth 25. And the athletes get minus 0.1 for every unsuccessful attempt, every time they fall off, basically. Molly, we're looking at these boulders for the first time, and immediately, they are long. Yes, definitely longer than what we're used to. I think the boulder scoring has been through a few little changes over the years. At first, it was about doing climbs quickly and attempts mattered, and then we kind of moved into being more around and getting more zones as well. And now we're back to attempts actually being quite important as well. Yeah, so there are the two zones, three points and six points indicated on the screen. And it is worth remembering that this is a test event for the Olympics. So if you're watching at home, don't just sort of like uh, throw your arms up in despair. Things can change <laughs> if they go wrong. And it's just a process of sort of 
fine-tuning climbing and the scoring system as well. So it might not be forever. So boulder number one, there it is on screen. So yeah, long, complicated moves and climbs. A lot of these athletes will be pretty tired, though probably very thankful for yesterday's rest day. It was a rest day for all of climbing yesterday, um, but a lot of these athletes went to watch other events, um, came out to watch the speed the day before as well. Uh, I think the athletics was pretty popular last night. Yeah, 100 meters final, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think almost all of these guys were watching. <laughs> so cool to be part of such a massive event. Um, I think it's the beginning of climbing's journey in this sort of environment. I agree, and it fits in so well, doesn't it? It doesn't feel out of place. This is where we belong as a sport. Yeah, walking around Munich, you hear people talking about the climbing, and it's just so cool that it's so popular. I've heard it's more popular than BMX, but uh, <laughs> don't tell anyone that, but that's, that's the rumor I've heard. Well, the women now get two minutes to look at each boulder, so they get to work out how to climb it. They're not allowed to touch any holds apart from the first few, can't pull off the ground, but you will see them feeling those holds and trying to work out the sequences. And of course, Molly, we talked about it before, but the athletes discuss the beta amongst themselves, and that's kind of unique for sport, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Climbing is such a friendly sport, um, and it's really cool to see athletes working together. A lot of the time, it feels like it's athletes versus the roots or the root setters. Um, so this observation period is really important for gathering as much information as possible from yourself and then also talking to everyone else because once you do come out to climb it's just you i've always wanted to ask this uh, and you don't need to give me an answer <laughs> but do you have it in the back of your head that you sort of have to keep relationship friendly between other athletes because presumably if you go into the isolation area and burn all your bridges no one's going to help you <laughs> that is a good question i think it's pretty un like uncommon to have climbing uh, animosity i'd say within the competitors um but i think all of these guys are just friends anyways they go on rock climbing trips in the off season they make journeys to train with each other um visit each other sometimes go on holidays with each other or move in with each other so i think it's pretty easy for everyone to get on Okay, that's fair enough, and a good diplomatic answer there as well. Very impressed by that. Thank well, you. they are <laughs> they are looking. Three Slovenians, though, in this final. Yeah, go on, Brett. Mia Krampel. Uh, so, I'm trying to find the third one. Two, sorry, two Slovenians in this final. Apologies. There's too many white T-shirts on stage. Um, and obviously, teammates, that does help a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. I can imagine there'll be competition there, but they're so used to being around each other, um, train together, compete against each other for years. And I think it's definitely nice to have that kind of comfort blanket, having someone you're really comfortable with and who just gets you and knows you. So, and obviously to share beta with as well. So they are almost, well, they're through boulder number two. Now looking at boulder number three, I see pockets. There's an undercling up to that first zone. I see Burl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Physical on that overhang. And with this wall, it's a small wall, for sure, which has limited the root setters a little bit. They've got to be quite creative with the setting here. Yeah, for sure, especially with the two zones on the boulders then being longer. Um, I wonder how much it will change the style, whether we'll see it become almost a bit more like lead climbing. Yeah, well, I've chatted to a few of them, and they sort of agree with that uh, assessment, because you've got to, because you can't have... I mean, there are a few zones right next to each other, but. You've got to have it looking balanced. Mm. And you can't just have six points right next to the top hold. Yeah, or right next to the first zone. Exactly. It has to be well split throughout the boulder, I guess, which means that, yeah, like maybe the intensity of the boulder will come down because there'll be more moves. Yeah, that could be the case. And, and also, I mean, we'll talk about the lead scoring later on, but is lead getting more bouldery or is it just still an endurance fest? Yeah, I guess. You only get a score from about a third of the way up the route, so it kind of condenses all the intensity of the route into yeah half the wall almost. So interesting. So boulders more like lead and lead more like boulders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all flipped on its head. Very strange. Well, look, there is that top 25 score. Nice to see it written on the wall. Yeah, minus 0.1. And the scoring system works like this. And, and again, uh, there should be graphics. We should It should be quite clear for you watching at home. But the lead score is added to the boulder score. So let's say they score 100 points, which is the maximum for boulder. And then they score 20 points for lead. Their score will be 120 at the end of it. And that's how it's worked out. 
Uh, don't worry, we'll be taking you through it. Molly's got a book. She actually brought, like, it's like a homework you've got with you. I brought a notebook just because a lot of you wanted help working out the scores, and I think I'm going to need some help working out the scores. A lot of you have asked if this is new for us, if we've practiced it, and I'm pretty sure most athletes, this is the first time they've ever even thought about this um, combination format of lead and boulder. Yeah, the only event we've had before this was a, was a test event in Barcelona, and Alberto Ginez Lopez was the only one from oh. the current squad who did it. I wonder if that would be an advantage. I do wonder if there'll be any tactical kind of changes, um, advantages that Alberto will use in his um, event tomorrow. Yeah, he won it as well, so he's, okay. he's obviously quite good at so it. So he's confident in this <laughs> format. Yeah, he should be, hopefully, but we'll see. It'll be a... Uh, That'll be very interesting. Um, so there is Chloe Collier having a look again, strapped up on her neck. And she had that whiplash. She fell off and got a sort of, yeah, a smash on the, on the pads. Yeah, I've seen her getting physio treatment pretty much every day in the athlete's lounge. Um, looks like she's really feeling the accumulation of rounds of this event. Well, that's our final boulder on the slab. And very similar in terms of style to how most of the boulders have been set on that. It starts on the left, goes towards the right. Hannah Moyle there having a long look, trying to figure it out. Hannah, very, very, very good at slab climbing. Yeah, she is. She is indeed. She was so happy when she uh, got a medal for the lead as well. Oh, for sure. She's just a very happy climber. Um, definitely sticks out. Always looks almost posed on the wall in photos. Yes, it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I know. That. I'm like, I look like I'm trying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so six seconds left of this observation period, and now the women will leave the stage, go back into the cooler. I don't know what's cool? It's an antechamber behind there, where that historical building is. Yeah. And it's a very cool place to just sit and hang out and wait to climb in in an event like this. I got to hang out there yesterday when no one else was in the stadium. And it's, it's really atmospheric in there. It is. I know. It's definitely a, a soak this moment in um, vibe. Well, the women still talking as they go back on. Yeah, observation may only be six minutes or how many minutes per boulder and route but it goes on much longer in isolation. You see, it take, it must take at least double the amount of time to get back to isolation as it does walking out to the wall, because <laughs> people are still miming the route, they're still asking questions, and sometimes in ISO, 15 minutes later, half an hour later, someone will come up and be like, Molly, what did you think about this section? And I'm like, honestly, I cannot remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good insight there. So, as Molly said, this is Molly Thompson-Smith in the commentary box, who's GB climber, didn't make it through, but she is with us here today and we're really I close it, to starting. That's me, Krampel, speaking in Slovenian. I wish I spoke Slovenian. Yeah, don't. me too. Maybe I would understand how to do all the climbs. Yeah, exactly. I'd be a better climber if I did. It so, is always interesting who reads with each other as well. Like, language becomes a barrier almost sometimes. I think climbing is a language itself. Um, and hand movements, you know, miming out the boulder can get you so far, but all of these women speak English, um, and so we'll all read together. But at World Cups, it can be quite tricky sometimes to communicate with people from a bit further afield. Yeah, this is, of course, a European event, so we miss the Japanese, Korean, American athletes who are usually there. I think it's hard to keep the tension. Hard to keep the tension, says Hannah Moyle. This, this. <laughs> This is fascinating. This, this. I know, I never usually hear this. No. And then, ah, then there is this thing. Yeah, it's okay, I guess. So I just wanted to be quiet there for a second. I wanted to listen yeah, to that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Snooping. Is it a little bit off-putting? We don't usually have cameras. In, in an IFSC World Cup event, you don't see that always. For sure. It's, it's definitely a bit off-putting. You kind of want to go through your normal routine, your process before you come out, but there's someone telling you you can't stand there or you need to be further back or no, no, wait, and now you walk. So it is definitely, you know, a little different. Um, but I think most of these ladies will be kind of used to some sort of camera around. Yeah, they've certainly got used to it over the week. It's been there the whole time. So that's our top eight. Qualified from the single events for the boulder and the lead. Their positions were combined to get this ranking. 
And it's interesting looking at that list. I mean, there's just a, a range of sort of people coming through and then the established ones. There's, there's people I'd expect to be there. Jesse, Yanni Gambra. For sure. And then there's others like Hanna, who's come through in the last year. Chloe Collier, yeah. who's a bit of an outsider. Hanna Lushka, who I'm not sure if she's made a Boulder World Cup semi. No, or, she's an elite one. I think even she was so surprised by how the Boulder round went for her. She was thrilled. Um, but yeah, she is definitely your typical lead climber and has been on a journey to learn all these new boulder skills. And yeah, it's great to see that it's been paying off for her. Now we're watching Jessie Pilt filing her fingers down. In a yes. sport that's all about skin, why is she getting rid of it? She must have too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, skin is so important in an event like this, doing so much climbing and as roots become more spectacular and um, attractive, the holds get bigger. Um, all these macros on the wall, and they are so much worse for your skin. So a lot of these ladies would have competed in at least how many rounds? One, two, three, four, five yeah. of the six rounds. That's a lot yeah, of climbing. And so they're probably missing quite a lot of skin right now. So Jessie's just Wait, doing a bit of skincare, filing down some extra skin. Maybe we'll probably see a lot of tape at some point as well. Yeah, so the athlete's trying to maintain it. And Molly, as she said, looking at her own skin. She's got holes in her own fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. And it being so warm just means your skin goes quickly. And I wonder how many people will be ready to give it absolutely everything on the boulders or be thinking, no, I've got four boulders to climb and I've got a lead route to climb as well. I've done however many days of climbing. And, you know, if I try this jump five, six times in, in however, many, however long I have to climb it, then I'm just going to... You know, be too, not have enough skin for the rest of the round, be too tired. Yeah, a lot going on. What well, Yenya comes out onto the stage to a huge roar from the crowd as she approaches boulder number one. On the left-hand side of the wall, starts on the bottom right of the slab, finishes up left. And I keep saying slab, it's, it's not really a slab, is it? It's fairly vertical. The bottom's slab, you know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right, here we go. The boulder round of this combined style format. Four tags on that volume, meaning as long as Zhenya has four points anywhere on there, she's in for a correct start. So it's complex, the moves on this. The zone is that blue volume there, and you can see the zone tag is lined up to it. So Zhenya uh, gets that three points indicated on the bottom left. And we're still on our first attempt. Into our second zone. That is the second zone and awarded as well. And then toe in the crack, a rock over, a match, and we've got our first climb and a first flash. And she is pumped. Yeah, she is. Now, I was going to chat about whether the route setters might have made the boulders easier because they know there's a lead route immediately afterwards. For sure. Could be the case here. I think so. And also being aware of conditions, temperature-wise, and the amount of days on these women have had. This definitely looks easier than what we've seen in previous rounds. Yeah, it does. And before everyone's up in arms about the route setting here, just remember how hard that job is just to, just to yes. defend the route setting. For sure. Thank you to all of our route setters. It is a thankless task. Yeah, they don't always get it right. Things There are mistakes and things that go wrong, but everyone is trying the hardest. As we watch Yenya here come through, match the top. Just like it is for us, a test event. It's a test event for the route setters too, and I'm sure they'll be making notes and learning as much as they can from this to make sure they really get it right next time. Yes, a very good point. So we're all working this out as we go, but this is the Olympic format. This is the kind of thing that we'll see in the Olympics. How different is it once we remove speed from things? I think it's pretty different. I think a lot of these athletes will be pretty relieved that they don't have to speed climb, not because they don't like it, but simply because of the strain it puts on their bodies mentally. It's almost a completely different sport to bouldering and lead climbing and the amount of time especially it being a new sport to a lot of these athletes because before tokyo most of these athletes would have never climbed the speed route in their lives it was just so hard to train for boulder and lead like you normally would and also to be climbing yeah absolutely it was tricky we're moving past that now and this is the new style so near cramble is underway and the pressure starts to ramp up here a little bit because she probably knows that Jenya flashed the boulder. For sure, Jenya was not out on the mats for very long, so Mia knows that it's definitely doable and it's doable quick. 
Yeah, so mind games for her. She needs to keep it together. Slow and steady as she reaches out to the left. Into the zone. She's awarded that. And you have to... Uh, you have to sort of change body position on the zone. You can't just touch it with a fingertip. It's not enough anymore. No, you have to use it now. And that's always something the judges need to, to define a little bit, which is tricky for them. Which is over. So that's two out of two. Certainly an easier boulder for the women. And the Slovenian coach walks away. Job done. Job done, yeah. <laughs> It definitely looks like they've gone slightly more towards root climbing style with this boulder, I would say. Yeah. A little bit insecure, but the intensity doesn't actually look that high. But I guess maybe that's just the angle of the wall, like kind of leading itself to this style. Yeah, it could be. And certainly there's a wall with that huge amount of overhangs on it. There's a bit in the middle, but even that's not that overhanging. No. Well, Mia Cramble does what she needed to do had to get a flash really to stay in contention two athletes are done and usually the athletes out first uh, are the ones who qualified last it's a similar situation here but their position is for two events yeah that's so a good point we're not necessarily seeing the bad boulders first if put in a simple way yeah not that they're bad but you know what i mean no yeah for sure <laughs> so it really is a mixed bag and it's hard to tell how hard a boulder is i guess in in this running order yeah so, Camilla Moroni from Italy gets her comp underway. The first hold she has to use into a heel hook using literally the rubber on the heels of the shoe to pull them into the wall. And standing up with the toes. Hasn't got the zone yet. Will now, she touches it and uses it. Strapped up the tape. That looks like it's more for an injury. Yeah, tendons, ligaments, and stuff in the fingers. And just strapping them helps, sort of, uh, in the same way, strapping a knee is a bit dodgy or a leg, it just helps take a bit of the pressure off. And it's a confidence thing as well. Goes out left, pinches, now needs to match with both hands in control. Which she gets. <laughs> the style was just right. <laughs> Right, so three out of three, and I think we can start to say this boulder is a little bit undercooked to start with, which is, uh, well, it's just one of those things, in the same way as in the men's comp, no one topped out one of the boulders. It is such a fine line between too easy and too hard, I'd say. Yeah, but for the next athletes coming out, they will have to top this and flash it to stay in immediate contention. Miller came through with the pinch, looked in complete control. It's a big hole to finish things off there. Nice slow mo of the dismount. <laughs> slow motion dismounts are incredible, I always <laughs> think. It's like, I can't imagine what I look like when I'm jumping down from the top of the bowl. Not pretty, put it like that. No, that was pretty graceful, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. I do think we should give star points. So Camilla's down. She's safely through this first boulder, did again what she needed to do. And Chloe Collier is out next. The camera panning down from the roof towards Chloe. And Molly has, uh, she put up on her Instagram earlier that people can send her questions. Do keep doing that because uh, it's good to know what you guys at home want to know. And Molly is the expert, so take advantage <laughs> of her right now. And Chloe runs out and that neck Heavily taped up, she fell from the top of the wall and really whipped her neck. That was a horrible slow motion. Hopefully she's not still struggling with that injury too much. Chloe was someone who competed in the last European Championships that was also in a similar format to this, i.e. doing boulder and lead in one day. So she's experienced in it. So she can continue, continue this brilliant run of form that she's having in this competition. Didn't have the best boulder season for the IFSC World Cup by her standards. Was a bit disappointed and wow, she recovered this week. Definitely peaked at the right time. So no zone awarded yet. Now she touches it and uses it. She stands upwards. Yep, there's the three points given by the judge. You can see how small that left foot is. 
her leg shaking a little bit. So much tension. There it is. Oh, and she does take a fall. Have her first fall. I forgot what falling was like. Well, there we go. <laughs> the athletes can do it. So, Chloe blinks first out of the women. The first mistake we've seen here. And that left foot, you were right, Molly. Good call there. It was bad. And when she stood up from it, she couldn't quite put the pressure on the right foot and just slip with the kick. And do remember, if you're watching this, when we say that the athletes kind of maybe finding the boulder a bit easy, these are still ridiculously difficult boulders. If an average climber was to find this in the gym, it would be sort of an all-day session, and especially within that four-minute time. Yeah, for sure. The time pressure and, and the just environment as well adds so much. And she's already back on. Yeah, so Chloe is up. And that's six point. It should have a uh, minus decimal on it. It hasn't, but uh, that's more the sort of graphic system we'll be using, but it will count against her, that fall. Just to let you know. Gosh, a, a fall for even more hurtful to get a decimal point taken away exactly. from it. <laughs> but no problems this time. Chloe moving into the last move. Yeah, she's gradually she's over. Opting for a heel in that crash. Switches to a toe, and an easy match. So, she's done. Oh, and there is the 24.9. Sindiaku! So, it doesn't come up immediately, it comes up later. So, yeah, just we're working out how some of these graphics are working too on the screen. So, you don't get it immediately, but it comes when she's topped the boulder out. Chloe crosses through that. Now, someone's asked me about being afraid of falling, and I'm sure Chloe might have had a little bit of a, a scare with a slip like that, especially when they're so unexpected. And it can be quite hard to get back on and give it 100% effort. But I, I think I'm more scared in the gym, being honest. And there's this sort of, you know, give it everything, like no matter what it takes kind of um, attitude at a competition where I'll climb past a cliff and, and won't be scared at all or I'll just throw myself at a dino as much as possible. So I think, yes, these athletes are human. They probably get scared when they go climbing outside. They probably get scared in the gym. But I think there's, yeah, there's a different atmosphere at a competition and, and these women are willing to give it absolutely everything. That's a really good question for ever sent that because I often, wa often watch them falling from four and a half meters up high up there. You look scary. I mean, yeah, Chloe took quite the fall in Boulder Finals the other day and I'm sure that would have knocked her a little bit, but she got back up and carried on. Yeah, strong competitor. Now we're seeing two athletes out at the same time. This is unusual compared to a normal single file uh, finals format. And again, one of those things they're working out. But yet, Denia is on the right and Eliska Aronofska on the left. So she really needs a flash. And this is the first time we're seeing Golden number two. And it's a big pop up move to the second zone here. It's a long way, it's a bit overhanging. It's awkward, but she finds the palm straight away. Great round so far. Looking good. Aliska on the left is coming towards the end of that boulder. We've got the two zones. Pretty hidden how to hold this cluster of yeah, It's blind around a corner, isn't it? So difficult. You can see her trying to work the body over. Try to grab anything she can, find something that's possible. Eliska tops out, that's a flash for her, perfect start to her comp. She's only still battling away with these pinches. You can see the thumb working really hard, a little bit of a shake. Maybe she is a little bit pumped. Yeah, it's a long time to be on a bowler route. And she's still fighting so much stress and tension through the arms here. The foot does not look very good. No, and that frog squat position looks restful. It's not, trust me. <laughs> That's the final hard. It's not the black volume, it's the yellow score on top of the black volume. Just need to touch point. that. We've seen people. Oh, nice. Still fighting, matches it, controls it. That means a lot. 
Yeah, that was. It would have been heartbreaking to fall off that top move and have to do all that again. For sure. Or to Excellent think that the black start. queen was the finish holder, the match that and drop green. down. We've seen that in previous rounds as well. Yeah, Lisa Lucan matching the wrong bit of the final hole. I know. I guess you're in. So, you're in the zone, and sometimes that can. You know, you can be so distracted by being so focused in a way that you forget to really check things out like that. So there is something underneath. So yeah, made it through. Now, it's so hard to grade problems like this. I get asked all the time, how hard do you have to climb to climb in a World Cup? How hard's a World Cup route? How hard is a World Cup boulder? And honestly, I went for a boulder session this morning and there were probably boulders in the gym that were like harder than what you get on a World Cup wall. But like we said earlier, it's just the environment, the time pressure, you know, the mental pressure as well makes climbing so much harder. <laughs> yeah, and it's something, uh you must get asked. It's all something the I get time. asked, and also what I always suggest is go to a bowling wall, find something kind of near your limit, and mm. then put a timer on it yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, it's so idea. much more difficult. For sure. And often, I guess climbs aren't necessarily set to make sense almost, they're set to throw people off. Um, so they're tricky because they're, they're trying to make you fall rather than setting it just pure difficulty. So Jesse is back on action on boulder number one. And then that's Mia on the right. So Jessie is up and going. She starts slow and steady. And that mental side we talked about will start to play a factor here. She knows she can't fall, but she wants to keep up with the top four. Mia Crample is underway on this long she boulder. She figured out how to start that boulder. So she's in, into the first zone. She'll get that three points in a set. She's definitely used it by now, hasn't been Going up, there it is. That's the zone awarded. It's such an awkward press, that, isn't it? Very awkward match. And stepping through. This is a bit different, but it works. And goes back with the right foot, but has a drop knee in order to talk up. Mia Cramble's on. Probably the crux move of this, this big stand up. It's awkward, it's insecure. Oh, and goes straight into the press rather than holding the hold. Like Jess is one move away from the top. <laughs> Matches perfect from her. Checks with the judge. Yeah, that's what she was doing, wasn't she? Looking down at the judge. What, what does the judge do? What's she looking for? Usually the judge will raise a clipboard or an iPad um, just for a really obvious uh, symbol that you can limit allow the top. Sometimes it's much harder to tell, to, you, you physically cannot turn around. So mo when that's the case, people just wait an extra second or two. Mia Grample snatches, flicks the right foot to steady herself, matches, and that is a flash and a top for her. Her second top that is rolled around now, and second flash. So 50 points scored. And the uh, top two women are separated at the moment on their position, their ranking coming into this because none of them have fallen. If they were to fall, we would start to look at the falls. And this is Mia Crample. Look at that laser focused on that sloper. <laughs> so she stands up very slowly. And that pop really was a fingertip on the right. So, a flash from her. And that was good climbing, solid from her. A flick of that right leg. The match. And down she comes. That's two out of two for Mia Crample.
interesting with this. It's, it's funny to see a split screen in a final. It's not what I'm used to. We're so used to focusing on one athlete at a time. You can see that. Jesse's super awkward undercut technique to get into this little screw on on the volume. Yeah, total focus from her. As she looks out towards the final hold at the end there. That's the Austrian coach giving some encouragement. That's the match, kind of crossed under. Doesn't matter how you get there, though. She did it first time, and that's what matters for this. Looks like it's going to be a case so far anyway that the boulder, you just need to keep in contention. Yeah. Which you just is... need to get to the top of every boulder and quickly. Maybe we'll see the athletes spending a little bit longer on the floor before they get on, really refreshing their memory, making sure they know exactly how to climb every single one. Because attempts really count in this round. Yeah, they are. So, Hannah Moyle enters for boulder number one. And Camilla Maroney is back for boulder number two. And a huge roar from the crowd. Home favourite. And the other difference by having two athletes climbing at the same time is obviously there's a potential for one of them to see a method on the second boulder, which is, again, True. different from another final. Something that people have pointed out, some people are not happy about. Mm. Uh, and again, just remember, this is sort of a testing event. Some of this might get worked out for the Olympics because it is something to consider, certainly. Definitely. Hannah Moyle, then, she is underway, stands up. Her first attempt starts now. Light work. So, first Easy from her, but this is the, the only real move that looks unsteady on this boulder on the right. Full body length away, you've got to stand up. Just trying to work out which part of the hole to go to, and goes way to the left, but looks easy actually. <laughs> And Hannah, look, you said she was good at slab climbing, she's cruising this yeah, at the moment. Chalking up on every hole. Just making sure. This is probably actually one of the cracks moves, that foot in the crack, she waits it, talks her foot in, and makes And a big out. smile. <laughs> Great start for Hannah. And yeah. I think, you know, the boulders almost get harder for every person that comes out because they know that, oh, that's another person who's topped that boulder and probably a flash. So the difficulty of the boulder may not change, but Camilla is struggling on these pinches. Oh, she is. Remember, other people have touched this as well. She's going back down to reassess. It's too far for her to rock all the way over. She's definitely going to have to trans transfer her weight over and end up facing the other way almost. Ah, oh, she does fall. And now we start to see this boulder bite because that took almost two minutes for her to climb it. That would have been quite an exhausting little struggle there as well, especially on those pinches. Well, she took two minutes to climb it. She, she will have to be quicker on the second time, but she will because she'll know the moves, but yeah. she can't rest that long. No. With every second she rests, there'll be less time on the clock. And I don't think she's really figured out how to climb that top section either, so she'll have more information about the start, but she'll still need to figure out this section, and she'll need some time to do that. Yeah, and she's still waiting here as we watch the replays. She's having a long look and trying to figure this out, but it's only a minute and a half on the clock. Kabila, get climbing. Please get climbing. Let's go. <laughs> so the crowd get behind her. A minute 20. She's obviously, she's really backing that she can climb the bottom fast. I think she is, she's going for a this is the last go. And with boulders being longer, it seems like you've only got two good goes at climbing, which is, I mean, imagine having to climb every boulder that's at your limit in the gym, second go, max. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Camilla stands up, gets the left foot out into the first zone. This is his move again, he's got 44 seconds. Are we about to see? I feel like I'm hyping a failure here up, but it, it's unusual so far. She's going for that buzzer beater. Yeah, she really is. Right, she's going to have to work something out. She is close, though. Has she figured it out whilst waiting, whilst watching? 
sometimes the pressure of the time counting down can actually help people do incredible, crazy bits of climbing. So hopefully that's the case with Camilla, but she really does not have one left. No, she doesn't, but she's going to have to commit to a sequence here. And she's flipping, she's trying to transition. Uh, uh, six seconds to go, that'll be our first non-top of the afternoon. Maybe this ball is more tricky than we thought. Yeah, maybe. So, Camilla Moroni doesn't top her score now 31 so interesting that boulder may be more difficult than we would have thought at the top Down she comes, it was a big fall, disappointing from her. But yeah, hard at the end, I think. Definitely. And our final athlete out on our first boulder. Another huge roar. So there is Yanya Gambra. Going for the clean sweep. Yeah, that's true, it is a clean sweep. Won the boulder, won the lead. Yeah, it was her first European Championship gold this, this week. So there's not many medals she needs to, to finish off the collection. Yeah, true. This will be a new medal for her, though, if she, was, if she is lucky enough to win. So she's up, Janja, into the first zone easily. Chloe Collier is standing as well. And I think this will be probably the most challenging round that Janja could have because she's made it clear how much she loves to be challenged physically. So this will be a super mentally challenging round for her knowing that all the boulders have been topped so far and flashed. Chloe stands up easily, big, powerful move from her, she's good at that. Yanya cruises through the slab, little adjustment, flash from her. Looks like she's just getting warmed up. Right, so this is the move that Camilla Moroni had issues with. Let's see if Chloe can figure out an efficient sequence. So, yeah, she's working her way to the right. Trying so hard, but she's managed to transition around that froggy pinch foothold. And in for a steady tip. Easy from her, checks it with the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Chloe loves a bit of a showboat. <laughs> she does, doesn't she? That was really cool to see. Well, she's done. Good work. She stays in intention at the top. And we can see she's got 49.9, and that's because she had one fall on the first boulder. That's the difference between her and Genia and Mia, who are both on 50 points. Good memory. <laughs> I was like, who have we had? There's so much going on. I know, it's a lot, isn't it? Happens quickly. Chloe, look at that, squinting. Out she goes to that top hold. Dances the feet up, matches. And that was the end of bowl two for her. And ask the crowd to liven up a bit more. Yeah, come on, crowd. Get going. It's actually a pack that's been growing all week. It was rammed for the speed here in the stadium, but it's busy today as well. It's like climbing sort of got its own hype as the weeks progressed. Yeah. Like more people are buying tickets. It's even more impressive with this heat. This venue is pretty exposed to the sun, but it has not stopped the crowd from turning up. Yeah. yeah we're a bit sheltered here in the commentary box, which is nice, until about four o'clock, and then the sun blinds us for about two hours. Oh, gosh. Just to make you feel sorry for us at home. <laughs> <laughs> not what you can, because we have the best view in the house, I tell you, it's awesome. Well, that was Yanya's top. We're just watching it on full screen. Match to the top, spins down. Good work from Yanya. We were worried at the beginning of the week, uh, sorry, not the beginning of the week, uh, after the lead, because she seemed to have a bit of a leg injury, but it doesn't seem to affect her at the moment. Yanya back on, she runs to the stage. Yeah, true, it's a goal number three. 
Right, Anya's it's... only just finished the first. Anya's already on boulder three. Wow, we're rolling through. So boulder one is now done. Done and dusted, we move on. And that's Eliska on the left. And those brushes, by the way, we've been saying all week, it was a competition at the Boulder Welt Gym. Uh, and whoever, you had to paint a brush, and whoever paints the brushes that get used, you get free membership for a year or something. Really? Or a month, I can't remember exactly what They're that's. They're absolutely beautiful. I would love to have one of these brushes. I know, and one of them might fit in hand. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> <Joe's> missing. <laughs> yeah, I want one. So, Jenya, heel hooks, what looks like a dual text yeah. hold. And a very interesting start. I think we've had almost every just catches that pocket. But every bowler has had a, a four points on one kind of volume start. Jenya comes in underneath that big yellow volume again. So the, the texture that's shining in the sun, that's got no grip on it, it's really slippery, where her left heel is now. You can see it's sort of sliding around. More powerful, this bowl that holds a sloper. And she's oh, having a good time by the looks of things. And this boulder definitely looks a bit harder than our previous two. And she is awarded the zone, so the judges deem that she used that zone. I was about to say, I'm not sure she did, but yeah, I guess she's changing direction a bit. It's marginal, that one. Yeah, <laughs> slow mo doesn't look good. <laughs> No, these scores can be uh, looked at, they can be uh, appealed later on, so sometimes we see changes. And that's why we have all the coaches sat right in front of the wall with all their iPads, um, ready to appeal any decisions that they disagree with, and you know, make sure that we score them correct, basically. Well, apart from reasons, so just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Isn't it? Don't tell them what I said. No, they will not enjoy that. No, they won't. <laughs> Apologies, coaches, I know you're more than that. No, it's a very important job, and it is a big part of the sport, because you have to look for it and, and stick up for your own athletes as well. For sure, and when you're out there climbing, you might not you know, be in the right... You might be so focused on the climb that you don't notice some things, and you also can't see what everyone else is doing, so maybe someone else has been awarded a score that they don't deserve. Um, and that's why the coaches are there, to take it all in and, and fight for you on your behalf. Absolutely vital. So Eliska stands up and she starts going right. I think she'll enjoy this rooty style. Mm. And Jenya struggled the second time of asking up to the pocket. Really the tricky first move. I do wonder if it'd be easier to just campus it. Yeah, maybe. Campusing when you take your feet off, just use your arms to power upwards. And yeah, sometimes feet just get in the way a bit for certain yeah. moves. Minute mark. She needs to turn that right knee in so that it's facing the left. Jenya steps up to the second slope past the zone. She's closer now, but needs to find the left one as well and pops off. That's really physical, that move. It's so physical, and the feet on the left are just facing the wrong way. At least get this down. She's quite an emotional climber, I'd say. You can definitely see exactly how she's feeling on her face. Yeah, some people use that sort of inspiration. Others, mm. like, you can see them almost getting held back by yeah. that emotion. Jenya left the stage before the end. You don't have to run the clock out. If you feel like you haven't got a boulder, you can save some skin and some attempts and energy. And this is a very optimistic attempt from Eliska. Oh, she hasn't done it either, has she? So that's a no-go on that boulder. So now we're starting to see some separation. Right. Yeah, so it's the second time that hasn't been topped, Boulder 2. And Jenya is the first athlete out in Boulder 3. She doesn't send it, so it's certainly harder, I think, on Boulder 3. Or more different style, anyway. Mm. This was her attempt. She was trying to find something on that hold. It really chalked up. She had that left hand on for a long time as well. Kept dropping back into it. So that's, no, that's, that's not that left hand. That's the one underneath the first one. She was close, but couldn't couldn't get the body position. It wasn't quite high enough on that left hand, I'd say. It's Jenya, so this is the slap to the left. She bumped, lost the foot before yeah, she didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, you can see her left foot slip, and a tiny bit of it was on that shiny bit. And you really don't want to stand on the shiny. <laughs> 
So she waves to the crowd and says goodbye for that boulder. She's got two more to go. No, she's got one more to go. That was boulder three, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, already onto the last boulder. It's been quick. So Jesse Pilts is out again, and Mia Crample takes on boulder number three now. So the women have to face the crowd, then when the buzzer goes, then they're allowed to turn. Jessie just reminding herself of which boulder this is. She's climbed so many in the last five days. That's a really good point, yeah. You're dreaming about boulders. <laughs> yeah. Right, so Mia Cramble starts this heel hook on that slippy surface, <laughs> and you can see it immediately slid off. I think the campus is right now. That works. And then out right underneath, pops her foot again. And I think Mia's opted for two different shoes. Yeah, she has. Lace up on one and a Velcro on the other. This is when observation of boulders is really useful. When you climb in a qualification for a boulder and you come, you've not seen the boulder until you have your five minutes on it, you, you kind of end up bringing out bags full of shoes and tape and whatnot, but when you've seen the boulders, you can make all of these choices when you're waiting behind the wall. So Mia's clearly decided or seen something that she needs her lace-up boot for on her left foot and her Velcro on her right. Yeah, that decision made before she came out. Sometimes they swap it on the mat, sometimes they don't. And Jessie is into the final part, which we know is problematic. And look at the strength of Mia Crample, she holds that left slope up. Explodes out from the wall. Yeah, it's hard to explode. It's easy to explode if you're holding a, a crimp like a sharp edge. Yeah. On a slope, it's difficult to generate that power. Sure. Jesse. Turning that left hand. <laughs> Just nearly fallen off so many times. She's still on. Now should finish it. Must match. Does. Awesome from Jesse. That's two out of two, I think, from Jessie. Yes. And then you can see 49.9. No, no, she had a fall then. Near Crample, that slap up with the right. That's a really powerful move. She has got another, she's got a minute 44 on the clock, so she's got time. This is Jessie, finish things off easily once she got the body position right, brought the right hand from the undercling into the crimp. High left foot, and then match the finish. focused and stony face, but she likes a little celebration. <laughs> so the fig four again, wrapping that left leg over, just get to a little bit more height. Better now, she knows the moves, looking more confident. So you can see how long these boulders are. In fact, she's got a chalk bag with her. Often the athletes just don't carry that for boulders because it gets in the way a bit. She's taking one up this thing. And the fact that she's able to chalk up on the holds. Yeah, the boulders are so hard and the holds are so bad that there's not really much opportunity. Here the ball is definitely broken up into sections. And sliding. I don't think she's going to have time. She calls it, so no top for her. So just the two zones awarded, 56 uh, score. But at the top, head of Genia due to the uh, positioning of the final. And you can see how slippy that shiny bit on that yellow volcano is. The jump over, face the audience, eyes focused. She was pretty relaxed there. She really does, yeah. But no effort at all, but it is physical. And a slap left into the slope, but came off. Now I'd say Camilla is quite a powerful climber, so I'm really interested to see how she gets on with this third corner. Yeah. 
it's not a lot on that sloper, is it? No, and slopers depend on a lot of friction between, well, the hold and, and people's skin. And I'm sure these women won't have much skin, so they'll be so much hold, harder to hold. <laughs> I think it's Hannah Moyle there holding the uh, bag on one finger. <laughs> just too strong. That's how she does it. Just a shopping on one finger. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll try that. I get a really sore finger. Right, as the audience gets sprayed with water to combat the heat, Hannah Moyle is out, as is Camilla Morodi. So Camilla Morodi has a look. I think she's going to camp us. No, she's not on it. Okay, so she's got the start, and she's going to camp us. She's going to go for the camp. Oh, oh no. no, and she's also... Oh, no. It's got to be a campus. She sets up, thugs her way up to it. That does look a bit easier. It does, but because the bit that you actually hold is so small, the accuracy, you've got to be so accurate on a move like this. And it's hard to be accurate when you just put it with your arms. But she nails it for second time. So good at that kind of move. So she's underway. Hannah Moyle needs to stand up into this familiar position we've seen. Trusting that left foot on the sloper. Hannah using oh. not the undercling there, the press. She went to the uh, the crimp, I think the it crimp. is, underneath. Yeah, we've not seen that since Genia, but Genia went for a bit of a combination of the press and that crimp. So slightly different from Hannah Moyle, she goes right. Ooh. I said it wasn't a wrestle position. I think Hannah demonstrated that there. <laughs> it's tricky. Camila Moroni came down as well. Hannah's one move away. The crowd get behind it. Doesn't need that underclink. Right foot, left foot up. Right hand, left foot up, and the match. And another top for Hannah Moyle, keeping things perfect. Probably having the most attempts we've seen out of anyone so far. Oh. Going for quite a wild method on this. Yeah, she's really hard to coordinate. Mm, that quite way. a long way away from it as yeah. well. I think she realised it as she spun, you can sort of half see it out of her peripherals. She's gone for almost a swingy method, but then it's quite fast, so she'll need to do a bit of pulling. And that, when she pulls with her arm, she then kind of almost makes but like, doesn't quite get the distance yeah how she held that for as long as she did is pretty special <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that right hand that they're on now is actually blocked as well i don't even know what muscle she used to hold herself onto the is it <laughs> shoulders is it what it was crazy and this is hannah's successful attempt So she matched those holes again, more and more chalked up into the crimp easily from her. A slightly different method from Jesse Piltz. And that smile we're so used to when we see Hannah topping out of Boulder again. She gets it done and comes down. And Camilla has 47 seconds to get this done. This will be her last go. And watch this wild move. Will she have the distance this time? Let's see if she tries the same thing. She changes the method. She does swing. And just can't quite work it out. But it looks like she's going for another try. Yeah, she's not going to have a lot of time here. She has only got the first zone, so perhaps going for that six points on the second, which she might have time for. I'm super impressive that she's just wrecking out that first move. She's in. Better this time now. We'll want this zone. I think it might be all she can get. Yeah. Still a worthwhile attempt if she does get this zone. Holds it. Will the judges award it? Let's see. I think they will on that. I think they will. Let's and wait and see. She pretty much dropped off. That was purely to get the zone. And then, she's yeah. In. Well, yeah. there we go. Look, you talked about tactics. That is a tactic that we're was, seeing. Yes, definitely. And it paid off. Had it not, I don't know. Had she not got that second zone, it might have been 
just tiring out, tiring her out for no reason. But it was definitely worth it to get that second zone because you know, she now six points on that boulder. Yeah, so six points on that one. It's it's really interesting because usually I think she would have walked away and said, "Look, it's not going to happen. We haven't got enough time." Yeah. So we see maybe the first change in how the athletes approach it with this new system. And there she is into that zone. That was enough that she knew the second she pulled yeah. up on it, she was done. That was it. So we've got just Yanya Garnbrett on boulder two left. Chloe's out on boulder three. Both of them looking uh, quite a stony face there yeah, as they came out, maybe focused. feeling the pressure. <laughs> An exciting opportunity for Chloe to get the first top on this boulder. Yeah, I think it's her kind of thing, isn't it? Mm. Another very powerful athlete. And Yen is straight on the wall. Yeah, didn't really have much of a look up. Getting himself all tied up. <laughs> the left and now interestingly that tape that was down the whole of her left leg is only under the knee now i find that interesting <laughs> it's just me oh yeah you're facing out going for a different method and i mean it's about as static a stand-up as yeah. you can get isn't it controlled most of it maybe the way the root set is intended that's certainly what they were doing yesterday when i watched them testing uh, it for the show i see for the show of course <laughs> Chloe goes with a foot into yeah, the pocket. Yeah, Chloe goes foot first, which will control the move, but I wonder if she's got any space to actually get her hand in that hole now. I don't think she does. She's going to have to drop it as she comes across. A very awkward match, and as we saw earlier, that hole is blocked, so there would not be space for two hands there. Oh, it is enough. Look at that. <laughs> I'll be quiet while she gets the right hand in. I reckon she's going to have to match again. Yeah. So I wonder if this method really has saved her much energy. Yeah, not that efficient. The Yanya tops out boulder two. That's a flash. That was a walk in the park for Yanya. Yeah. Now, the reason that Yanya isn't at the top of the scoreboard is because she hasn't done that boulder three yet. So we're really only going to know when the dust settles on boulder number four where we're at. I'm sure there's mathematicians out there working it out. Chloe looking a little bit tired now. She's still on the same... She's still on the same attempt. So this would definitely be a two-attempt match for Boulder for Chloe. But she's still fighting. Well, that's the zone for her. This is her Boulder if she can pull it off. Gets the foot in. Oh, no, she can't, though. And she looks like she gave it a lot that go. She seems surprised. The second she came down, I mean, that's a long time to be on a Boulder. Definitely. Two minutes. Try climbing for two minutes on a boulder in your local gym. <laughs> There's, usually it's a couple of seconds. It's a third of a leaf route. Yeah, it, that's <laughs> a really good point, yeah. Jeez. Well, well, that's the difference again we're seeing. And that right hand that Chloe went up to, the chalk you can see is on the underside of it, which means that you're not really holding, but more pushing and pressing. I just want to point out there's a break in the beach volleyball that's next to us, and pretty much everyone is watching from the beach volleyball oh, yeah. at the climb. <laughs> I think it was on the screens in the beach volleyball arena yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, the that's speed cool. climbing was. Awesome. Just picking up our sport here a little bit. And yes, I am biased, I don't care. <laughs> it's been crazy walking around with all the other athletes and walking by the volleyball players and them being about two of me stacked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep trying to spot which athlete's in which sport. Mm. It's quite hard to do. Yeah. So Chloe had a long rest. She's in for a final attempt unless she needs a couple of goes to get back on That's, this first move. This is interesting because whereas Camilla hadn't got the zone, Chloe does have the zone. Mm. So only a top really is going to be worth it. Yeah, for sure. And she clearly thinks she can get to the top. Which is cool. Yeah, she's only got 30 seconds, though. That method she originally did took her a long time. I think she's swapped it. She has swapped it. Much more efficient. So, different method. And now, this move is a, a bit trickier because of the position she's in. Up into the crimp. her hand to help out. Five seconds, though. Oh, not much time. No, she's got to go immediately. She doesn't. 
So a long burn, but the double zone. Again, encouragement there from the Belgian coaches. Yeah. It's quite impressive that Chloe changed her method and nailed it first time as yeah. well. Yeah. She did really well to kind of persevere with the first to make sure she got those zone points. And then to recognize that, oh, maybe that wasn't the most efficient or the best way of doing this and kind of come up with it on the fly pretty quick as well. So this was the first attempt with the foot and then matching it. And that's why I said there wasn't any space. It really didn't look like there was. And we're back to Yanya this time. So that was Chloe, this is Yanya. She flashed that boulder out to the grim match. Yanya hasn't really tried yet. She might have to on boulder three. It'd be very cool to see a top from her there. So, Genia is back, and we get to see boulder four for the first time. And Eliska will be on boulder three. Now, as a lead climber, this is a more bouldery boulder. Yeah, I'm not sure this is Eliska's style preferred style as such, but as we saw Chloe kind of tech it out, I, I do think that maybe Eliska could try something similar. Yeah, true, you don't need that big physical move, you don't have to. But will she try campus? I think she's going to try to get her feet on. She goes fig four, so obviously they've read it like that. But showing that the fig four is quite a tricky method, actually. Trying both ways. So I think she would have known that the other women, that's the method they were going to try. So she mm. gave it a really good go there, but didn't seem to be her thing. Yeah. Jenny tried to get a toe hook to stop her falling. This is kind of the first bit of coordination we've seen in this round, which is maybe due to the new format. So when you say coordination, what do you mean by that? So I mean moves that are less static, where you have to move more than one limb, body part at the same time. So as we can see, Jenya's going with a hand and a foot at the same time. And it's all about timing, momentum, body positioning. She wasn't looking at that foot at all as well. No. And I think that's one of the trickiest things about coordination moves is that there's so much going on, but you really ha you can't look everywhere. You can't look at your hand and your foot at the same time. So it's a case of kind of choosing where to focus on when. So Eliska gets through that first sequence and is actually looking really good here. Look, look at that method. Yeah, speaking out every toe scum and, you know, a bit of contact with the wall is possible. So she eyes up this, but this is a powerful move, and she might not have the energy. Let's see. She's got a boost up towards it with the right hand as well. Gets it just with the fingertips. I haven't really talked about Genia, but she's through that first move. And, and once you learn the coordination moves, it does tend to be a bit easier the second time, third time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it, this is two back to back. I was wondering if we'd see this with the two zones. And yeah, you've got that right hand, left toe hook catch combination into a jump into a left hand palm and a right hand side body hold. Yeah, that's as complicated as yeah, the sound. Yeah, like is I there. can't even say No, but it's it really <laughs> it's good that you said it like that. It just shows how much is going on. Yeah, and if you think about how hard it is to say it, imagine how hard it is to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let, let's watch this. So she's got that left toe, then bumps the right, and then this is the move you were kind of talking about. Yeah, here we go. She lines it up. And there's a foot plant as well. So oh. there's three parts to that. So complex movement here. I guess one of the good things you could say in this, with co coordination moves in this format, is that you can have more goes. There's more chances to learn the movement. And, you know, once you do it once, it is generally a lot easier to repeat it because your body kind of has felt the position. A lot of the time, when I'm trying to, you know, piece these moves together, I'll pull into the final end position of the move, and that's a really good guide as to where you need to get to. And then you stick to the second coordination move. And is this a third coordination move? They've really gone all out on this boulder. Yeah, nice. A bit more basic, but still. Yeah, by that point, your brain is just frazzled. Yeah. You don't want to do any more of that. But she's going to top and out. And top from Genia. She is psyched. What a way to finish her ball around. Yeah, really strong from her. So she'll move into the lead in a brilliant position. And it's my mum and sister. <laughs> and Eliska is still going on her climb, and she has time, 25 seconds. And she, 
And this is the first time she's been given. She's got the second zone and just getting a bit too bunched. But she bumps up the standings, and this is going to be really important for her because as more of a lead climber, mm. she's got that to come. Yeah, so she's got her best to come, so this is kind of just collecting as many points and trying to keep up with the rest of the pack. Yeah, just exploding out too many limbs in a small box. Genius top, so three coordination moves in a row, and so difficult to learn that because you've got to learn it, get the sequence down, get the movement, get it into your body, and then do it every yeah, time, three times in a row. Every time. Yeah, that is a textbook coordination boulder. That's your ABC of coordination climbing. Yeah, that last move you see quite a lot in gyms. You know that le yes. right hand, left hand. Yeah. All the other ones are so complicated. Yeah, for sure. But they are becoming more commonly set in gyms, I would say. And there is really cool to see like new climbers doing attempting moves like this. Yeah, for someone like me who's uh, been climbing for a couple of years now, it's uh, it's not something I'm used to doing. You no. know? But you guys, you've kind of grown up doing this. I don't know. I feel like I was a little bit before this. <laughs> I feel like I've still got a lot to learn. But definitely the younger kids and you know the 16, 18 year olds coming through will have grown up with this being the main style um, of competition bouldering. Yeah, and it's interesting watching them take it into outdoor rock climbing as well. Yeah, going climbing with my teammate, Max Milne, outside. He's like, I just want to make every rock boulder comp style. Yeah. I want to paddle dino everything. I'm like, Max, <laughs> we're climbing a rock. <laughs> we just crimp it out like the rest yeah. of us. Stop it. <laughs> An easy campus move for Jesse. Another super strong athlete. Let's we'll see what she decides to do for this tricky section. Oh, straight in there. Such good coordination in that as well. I mean, we've got these crazy coordination moves, which are more obviously coordination, but even figuring out which way to flick your hips or when to flick your hips, when to move the arm, there's coordination in a move like that as well. And here we go. This is a flash attempt as well. Oh, interesting. Trying to double bump that right hand. Nia Cramble is trying the coordination moves on the final climb. Now this is, with coordination, this is where we might see more of a split in attempts. Um, probably more attempts on this, and so we'll get more decimal points taken away from each athlete. Yeah, and that will let up towards the end. And remember, this isn't standalone. Lead is next. I think we have a bit of a break before that starts. A break for the athletes as well. So Jess is using one of those painted brushes. You can adjust the angle of the head on those to uh, more accurately brush the bit you want to brush. I don't know why you want to know that back at home. <laughs> if you don't know about climbing, there you go. That's what happens. And that's what Mia Crab pulls her coordination move here. Okay, she's done the first one. Let's see how she attempts the second. Oh, easy. Palming down with that left hand. Nicely done by Mia. And lining up for the third. Right, this is easier, but at this point, she's tired. She's done enough and doesn't want to do it again. Drops in and catches it. And from here, you'd think it would be a fairly easy move to the top. Let's see. Oh, oh and another, she, another one. one! And she enjoyed that. So she used the toe to stop herself, but she was swinging off there. Yeah, and as we can see, it took her less attempts than Genia, and that's why she's top spot with 80.9 points. So Jessie sticks her tongue out as she tries to figure this out. No Another foot on his own. Let's see what she. Let's see if she changes anything for this section. Put in the volcano again, and she's wrapping that zone hold a bit more. Shoulder press to hold that. No. No. Tries the same. Looks a bit confused. What do they want from me? Yeah, and she's got two zones, so again, she'll have to figure out whether she can actually do that top. Yeah. And she's still on the map. It's interesting, it's not against the nature of the climber to stop, is it? But no. she does look away off this at the moment. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it can be really hard to walk away because, you know, you're so used to just trying and trying and trying until you succeed in the gym, working boulders. And obviously, you want to walk away at the top, but sometimes, 
Yeah, so strong she campuses up easily to the pocket. Yeah, climbing quicker and quicker through this lower section. Well, she's got to, she's only got 20 seconds on the clock, out to the crimp, the zone is there. She's already been awarded, she won't get more score for that. 10 seconds, this is going to be snatch and grab and go. Seven, one move away, come on Jessie, no, it's not going to be enough. And I think she's kind of figured it out now, yeah. <laughs> slapping the mats in frustration. I think she realised that rocking that left foot off would allow her to slap into that left-hand sloper. Here, we see it, left foot goes, and then maybe a rushed move out left. Oh, heels down, yeah. So she may have figured it if she'd had another minute, but isn't that always the case? <laughs> Just one I more know. time. Just one more minute. One more. So two more athletes on Boulder, three to go. That's Hannah Moyle and Yanya Gambra. Coach giving the normal encouragement. There was Mia Gramble celebrating at the top. Awesome from her. So we pan down, and it is Hannah Moyle and Camila Moroni are next two. Out she goes. Onto the stage, the host pipe man is doing sterling work down there. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah turns and has a look at this. She's good at these kind of power moves. Camila Moroni will have to start the process of figuring out the coordination sequence. You can see there the two tags on that lower volume for Camilla means she needs two points of contact there and two where her left hand was. She had the accuracy there, high up on the hole where she needed that left foot to be. Hannah cruised that bottom move, made it look simple. Crosses through, will have to swing. Oh. And then she's just getting that left foot where her hand was. Really efficient from her. Really comfortable in that position. Locking that move off, static, choking up with every move. And no one has done boulder three yet. Wraps a palm around as much skin as possible. We'll get the six points. Let's see what she can do. A really technical time, and maybe she'll figure out the body positioning to make these things work. Oh, Camilla gets it. Nice work from Camilla. Oh, oh, oh no! Just a little bit too casual. Hannah comes down. I really thought Hannah was about to flash that. Yeah. Well, we had a quick start, but I think it's sort it's of opened down up. Now. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bit more interesting than just those flashes at the beginning, so it was worth holding on to. <laughs> Hope you were patient at home. And welcome, if you're just joining us, we're at the European Champs for the Women's Boulder and Lead competition. My name is Matt Groove, and I'm here with Molly Thompson-Smith in the commentary box, and we are coming up towards the end of the Boulder part of this final. The athletes qualifying from the single events that took place earlier on in the week, only the top eight made it through this far. We're having our first real look at the Olympic format that might be used in Paris 2024. So if you're a climbing geek or if you're new to the sport, this is a fascinating thing to watch. Camilla controlling that release onto the first zone this time. She's got to figure out that second formation. She seemed to miss the right foot. Yeah, and just ended up spinning off there. Kind of still resting it out. Yeah, she's only had one go on it. She thinks she's figured it out enough, needs to milk the rest. See her shaking her arms, trying to get some of that pump out, getting herself ready to go again. I once heard a 
something that may not be true, but I'm going to say it anyway, which is if you're climbing set bouldering your limit, you need maybe five to six minutes in order to get that recovery back. Really? So it just makes you realise how hard so these women have to go. I was going to say, <laughs> so first go, only go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it just shows the level you have to sort of fight through. If, let's say you need at least six minutes in order to get that recovery. They just don't have that time. You have to go when you're not necessarily ready. No, and this is where... Ooh. This is where maybe being a lead climber might have its benefits in the whole round, you know. Being able to, like, to handle more moves in a row, recovery. Yeah, it's a good point, especially with the longer boulders that we're seeing. For sure. Miller is down again on the coordination move. She's frustrated. Anna Moyle to her left. This is her last oh, attempt. She's only got six tired. seconds. I don't think she's going up. No, she's not. So no top for Hannah, but two zones, which is what she needed. That's pretty much that is what everyone's got, I think. So Yanya Garmbre is the final climber out on Boulder 3 before we say goodbye to that. We'll be almost towards the end of this. And I think Yanya will be really looking forward to this boulder. Yeah. When doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Yanni Garmer, you think after winning so many comps might perhaps be a bit over it, but and people someone said to me today in fact, is it not boring watching Yanya win all the time? And I was like, no, look, it's like watching Michael Schumacher or, or you know, like mm. Roger Federer in his absolute prime. And one of the coolest things is it might never happen again. That's true. She oh. really is one in a million almost. Yeah, and we're in her era, we get to watch it. Yeah, it's super cool. And I also think with every win, like the next one gets harder to win. The pressure, you know, everyone else is chasing. It's so, I think it's easier to chase than it is to be in the lead, you know? It's hard not to get complacent, but Yanya definitely doesn't. And she's just so driven and so passionate about climbing, always wanting to be better and push the sport further for all of us and herself. Yeah. Thing is, is I don't have to chase it. You do, and yeah, I can't I imagine how hard that is. <laughs> it's so funny when we go training and the guys are like, oh, I did that, and I can't even touch it. I'm like, yes, <laughs> this is what I have to compete against, guys. <laughs> but it is totally inspiring. Really, really cool to see what's possible. Yeah, well, she's got to get zones though on this too. She needs if she's going to keep in touch. So important boulder for Yanya. And we'll see if this boulder is possible. Yeah, it's very hard at the top, and no one really has offered a solution to it. And Chloe fully ate on ball number four. So Yanya out, easy through the first couple of moves. Oh, look at the come on. Okay, a strength. One arm the way through that spin. But she's having to work. tangled up there. Yeah, she is. And this is where she needs to start working. She drops that foot, and she's going to smash into this left sloper. Yanya, one move away. Oh. Oh, she had to work hard for that, but there you go, and she is psyched. The crowd goes wild. I think people are banging on the stands. Yeah, they're drumming their feet. Oh, that's the hit. It sounds like thunder in the distance, but that's what it is. So 75 points for Yanya. And this was it, just eyed it up, and it was just stuck to it. There was no real movement. All I could think of was the sound <laughs> as she kind of hits it. That's all <laughs> I was thinking about. That would have been a very about. satisfying slap, wouldn't it? <laughs> the weird stuff in my head when I'm watching this sometimes. And this is the final move that held it beautifully out, thumb pressing on the slippery surface. And Yanya, our only competitor who could still achieve that perfect round with 100 points. Yeah, are we going to see 100? I'm be sure that's her aim to get a 200 point total for the whole competition. In, in the overall world ranking, she's clean sweeping. Yeah, and you know, technically a world record, a, a world's first as well with the I new know. scoring system. And to make it through to this, um, today's competition, she was first place with 2,000 points. So, oh, <laughs> crazy beat of there from Chloe. Yeah. Opting to go for a right hand palm instead of the left, like all the other women we've seen, I think. Yeah, there you go. 
she almost stuck it as well but with the left hand being not a jug not a really good hold there's so much rotation um, and she just not quite got the strength in the left hand to hold it so Chloe wincing a bit, she brings the left foot up, as you would, because it's a long stretch. The back on already. Yeah, she's got a minute 20, so let's see if she can figure out the second time. Oh. oh, and she almost holds it. I think that's the problem with these almost cryptic coordination moves. You have a go, it feels possible, and it's hard to stray away from that, really, especially when you've not got much time to figure it out. Yeah, because these athletes don't get the privilege of having a TV screen back in the uh, area they wait. This is on site for that one. Well, on on site? I always get confused about this. On site or flash? Yeah. On site. On site. Yeah, yeah, on site. Even though they've looked at it, it's still on site. Yeah. They haven't been told how to do it. Yeah, for sure. My brain went soggy there. <laughs> so Chloe bumps right. Interesting how she does that move as well. Not quite as dynamic as the others. And now this, though, so shouldery. Just going for that second zone point. Yeah, she hasn't got it yet, only one. It needs to come together now for her if she wants this second zone. She's going to try the same method. And now she tries the method we've seen successful, and she screams because she realizes the error in her way. Frustration at the end of Chloe's body, her ball go around. Yeah, so no second zone for Chloe. She knows her score. It's going to be mid-pack for her going into the lead. And that being Chloe's stronger discipline is probably not where she wanted to be finishing her bowl around. Now, this was Yanya's flash, and just a flash, everyone. And no one else has done this. Yanya just flashed it. Just want to make that very clear. Up to the top, bumped, thumb pressing in, matched it to control. Is that wasp again? There are wasps that keep cropping into the shot. <laughs> Sam Abazu almost uh, had a wasp incident where it buzzed around his head doing a boulder. And I keep seeing them, they're out there. And we watch again as Yanya tops out. Great work from her. Big fist bump, putting herself in a great position. Mia and Jenya still in the lead. I mean, I know we've not seen everyone on their last boulder, but they had a really good round. Doing really well. So, at least get runs out. Now, we go back to having just one athlete on the stage because, of course, we've run out of boulders. So this is a bit more like a traditional final from now on for the last couple of minutes of this. Five o'clock is the scheduled time for the lead, so there'll be a bit of a pause after this. If you're wondering when to have a tea break, that's it. Needs to get out, almost got the toe. Having one of those classic tester goes where you're lining up the move, just feeling how much you need to give, whereabouts the holds are. Getting closer, maybe just bring that toe a little higher up the hold. It will be a different position on that hold where Aliska will need to get her toe here because she's, I think, a bit taller than most of the other girls. And she's currently down at the bottom, so she would like to get at least two zones on this to put herself in a better position. She does stick it third time. Rubber on the top of her climbing shoes, helping with that move. And she spots the method straight away and has a really good first go at that move. Yeah, good work. And that has immediately bumped her up above Camilla Moroni by getting that zone. Now, it doesn't matter if you touch a zone hold, the important part of the zone hold and to secure the points from it is that you need to hold it and use it. So that might mean lifting a foot up once you've held it or moving your hips up. And so, as we saw, Alishka touched that zone hold but didn't quite control it, so she won't be given that, those points just yet. And that is something that changed quite recently. It used to be that you could just sort of touch it, get away with it, or maybe just... I remember Judge telling me if they watch the tendons go on your arm and tense, <laughs> they'd give it. Not anymore. 
she gets through that first move. Oh, but slips going over. That's the worst feeling when you're climbing, isn't it? When a foot pops like that. No, it's, it's always when you give it a lot of energy as well. Yeah, and it's not always just a straight slip, because sometimes, I think it's easy for people to be like, oh, it was a slip, uh, and that was it. But it, it's sometimes to do with the way you're moving or positioning mm. yourself or how tired you are. Yeah. Slips happen for a reason sometimes. I think Elushka just wants to get back to that move again, and so she's probably not climbing super carefully anymore. And, you know, getting tired, getting more frustrated, it all adds and it all builds, and it means that, you know, you might not put your foot in exactly the right position where it needs to be. And on boulders like this, the smallest margins, the subtleties are really important. And yeah, that was a really nasty fall. She came down. Molly's question from someone about fear of falling. <laughs> well, see how she deals with this the second time. I'm sure she'll feel that tomorrow. Yeah. But this is the last time that these women will climb a boulder, so they're going to give it everything. In this comp, anyway, spinning down, and that's not enough. One minute on the clock, she still hasn't got that final zone. Looking at her skin, falling off like this, where the hands just slip out of the holes, takes so much skin. Yeah, those fingers rubbing off. Ah, down with the left toe. Eyes up the jump. Movement getting a bit more frantic, a bit more desperate. Yeah, is it in her head here? Looking tired now, shaking the head. But she desperately wants these six points, you know that'll do it. It will probably get her up the leaderboard if she does, so it is important. But now I think she's going to finish it. Well, she gave it everything in those last couple of seconds. But don't despair if you're a fan of her because she has got her best discipline coming up next, that lead. She's won gold in lead competitions before, so she's got potential. Definitely. World Cup winner from... Brian Song. Last year? Yeah. Last year. Jessie Pilts out to the coordination boulder. Last three athletes on the final boulder here. Jesse Pilks gets a big reaction from the German crowd. Innsbruck fairly close to Munich. You sometimes get the feeling some of the Austrian athletes have been adopted by the German yeah. crowd. She's in sixth at the moment. Oh, yeah. Going all the way back but making it work. And taking a right hand down to control that release. Really good idea. How impressive is Mia Cramble and Genia? Has Still at the top. Oh, Jessie going for the same method as Chloe. We'll see if she sticks with it. Yeah, really good separation so far. Yeah, we were all a bit worried after those two boulders went quickly at the beginning, but it's turned into a good comp for this. Yeah, add a coordination boulder in. <laughs> yeah. And you'll split the field. Come on, Jesse, get up. Especially when with four coordination moves back to back. Yeah, it's a bit much if you ask me, but you know. <laughs> Right, Jessie back on the wall. She's got the first one easily. Yeah, much easier now. Oh, slow release there with that left foot. You can see creeping down, squatting your body. And she's figured it out much quicker than Chloe. And she knows that that's the method. Really impressive that she was able to switch so quickly. So, so instinctive. Um, to know that, oh, maybe this wasn't, didn't feel the right way, so I'm going to try something different. But Jessie pulls back on once more. Got lots of time. Oh, something didn't look quite right there. <laughs> she wasn't set then, there now you is. You can see she went much further down and left to get enough momentum to throw herself towards the right that time. So that's the two really hard moves done, and she's got the six-point zone. And she's going to try and control this move? No, I think she's realised that it's easier to just pop to it like that. It's a long way. It's all around it the corner, around that volume. It's really important that you squeeze as much as you can with that left hand. But, oh, and she goes to the top of that finish hole, but 
makes it work. Yeah, I was waiting for the toe to come in, but she didn't need to use it to stop that swing. And that's got her up into second position, which is perfect for her. Because she's a very strong lead climber, as we saw the other day, coming home with a silver medal? Silver medal. Great work from Jesse Pills, because if we presume, and this is presuming, of course, that Yanya is going to climb this boulder, then that will be Yanya at the top, then Mia, then Jesse, yeah. top three. Which puts her in a really good position for this I'm, lead route coming up soon. I'm trying to work out who's the better lead climber in my head. It's like, on paper, <laughs> Jesse beats Mia Crample. On yeah, paper. On paper. But then anything can happen, really. And I guess that's why climbing is so exciting. I said when I came into this fight, I was like, I'm not going to make predictions because I know I'll look like an idiot. I want predictions. OK, well, that's... Yeah, OK, well, we'll give predictions at the end, all right? We'll do that in a minute. But certainly, you really... It's, it's so much different from a, from a single comp. You start thinking one step ahead. Yeah. Let's see how coordinated Hannah Moyle is feeling. Of course, I forgot about Hannah Moyle, because she could also jump to the top of this leaderboard. That's true. <laughs> so much going on. She's got 25 points she could gain from this boulder. Yeah. So, here we go. Eyes up. The Crouches first move. down and nail for it. A little bit of a backwards turn, just for some style points there. You can see how flexible Hannah is, reaching down, going oh. further into the split, and completely controlling that release. Yeah, that's a lot harder than she just made it look. Yeah. Oh, nearly got it first time as well on that. Nods to herself. Knows she can do this move. Yeah, there's a, I don't, there's a bit of luck in a move like this, isn't there? Because you do just need to hit the right point perfectly. Yeah. That's why flashes are a bit less likely. Of course, you've got to have the skill to do it in the first place, but if you're all at that level, then, yeah, sometimes you just don't get it on an attempt. But it's there's one of those so things. much you can learn from trying the move, and I think that's why it's really hard to flash these moves. But then, you know, like Hannah, just easily does this first move again. Yeah, didn't need that adjustment the second no, time. exactly. So, chalks up, gets ready. Has she learned? Definitely yes. has. <laughs> so smooth. This move we know is a bit easier. She does get it, but the last move is tricky. She opts for to static it out, and I was wondering if anyone would do this, but there you go. No hesitation from Hannah Moore. She saw that early on, I think. Jumps to the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> All right, so now on paper. <laughs> now on paper, I know. We could go round and round. A fantastic all around for Hannah. Yeah, she runs off and got confused which way she went there and then corrected herself, went the right way. Okay, so Hannah Moyle, great from her. Once she just, just the speed that she learned that movement was amazing. Yeah. Sure, a very natural mover. It comes so naturally to her and she learns real quick. And I think that's one of the most important skills for being a really good boulderer. I like the fact that this boulder especially is, is the sequence through the bottom section is fairly similar for yeah. all of them, but that top move can be done in different ways. Yeah, and I like how progressive it is. People go try something, they're like, oh, maybe not that, or maybe I need to give it a little bit more in this direction. And for most people, we've seen them get higher and higher, which is, which is pretty cool. So good work from Hannah Moyle. She waves to the crowd. Final athlete, final boulder. <laughs> They're enjoying that spray, cooling <laughs> off in the heat. Hasn't got any cooler out there. I thought the clouds were going to come in at one point, but they've sort of gone now. Well, it's still very hot. Yeah, the wall's in the shade. And here is Yanya Garnbrett. She is out. So she's obviously sitting in fifth position. But in fact, she's sitting in fifth position, having not done the final five. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good going already. And I wonder if we'll see that perfect 100 points. That's a big ask, isn't it? It is. Four coordination four, four moves. Four coordination, but if there's anyone who can do it, <laughs> it's this woman right here. All right, let's see it. Come on, Yanya. Let's see if we can get a first perfect score with a new decimal system, shall we? 
doesn't really matter, but it will be cool to see. So she gets the first one first Looks like time. Barely a coordination move. But this is the tricky one. Let's see which way she goes. No! Oh. Well, it won't happen at this comp. Oh, she holds her back there. Yeah, she looks a little bit in pain. Mm, and straight down to her coaches as well, still holding her back. That's a bit worrying. So, well, oh, it's just, yeah, just Oh, oh he shouts out in pain by the looks of things. I really hope she's okay. Because Yanya can be a bit too tough for her own good sometimes. You rarely see her in pain, but she must be. Yeah, for sure. She's back on the wall already. Well, she'll be definitely getting treatment for that in a bit. Oh, it's the hook. The thing is, she'll know as well, with injuries like that, sometimes you just have to get going quickly because your body will then start to freeze up a bit. Sure. And that time she just jumped so much higher into that move. You could see her arm was in a 90-degree lock. And here we are. Super easy. A little shake of the head. So, almost a perfect score. 99.9 .9 for Yanya Gambra. Great from her. She leaves the stage. Still, obviously, a bit with that back, and I think there's a bit that she doesn't really want to show how hurt she is as well. I'd agree with that. Let's hope she's... Well, she's got some time. Yeah, so it's now 20 past four, and this was the back hole, just went down to it straight away, right on the lower back. It could just be a knock, and there's no way she'll stop anyway, unless it's really serious. So let's watch this attempt from Yanya. This is the second go to get the 99.9 .9 score. And do keep sending your questions to Molly if you are. She is looking at them literally as we speak, so she's, uh, she will try to get back to you if there's any particularly good questions about climbing, about the sport, about scoring, whatever you want to know. Molly Thompson-Smith, our athlete expert here in the commentary box. It's <laughs> a lot of pressure, that. It is, isn't it? You are the voice now. <laughs> So that was Yanya waving goodbye. Didn't quite give us our perfect 100 point round, but we'll have to settle for point one off. Well, look how close it is at the top. Yanya Garber at 99.9, .9, then Hannah Moyle, Mia Cramble, Jesse Pilts, Yevgeny as well. Look, that's brilliant from her in fifth position, mid pack. Chloe Collier, Eliska Animovska, and Camilla Moroni down the bottom. So within that top five, certainly, there is a lot to play for here. 100%. And I'd say that I mean, we've got most of our really good lead athletes in that top section as well, which means it's going to be even tighter on the lead route. Yeah, remember, the lead score is added to that bolded score. So let's say they score 10 on the lead wall. You get, so if you're Hannah Moyle, you get 90.9 .9 at that point. So that's how it's going to work. It's going to be tight. Make sure you come back to us at 5 p.m. Well, just before, we'll start talking probably 10 to. So we'll take a break now. We'll return soon. Good bouldering comp, and we'll see you in a little bit.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Munich for the Boulder and Lead combined format here at the European Championships. My name is Matt Groom and I'm joined by Molly Thompson-Smith, GB climber in the commentary box. And Molly, we've just seen the Boulder. Interesting round, to Definitely. say the least. I mean, it picked up, didn't it? Yeah, it started to. We had a, a slow start that wasn't ideal with very fast tops early on, then a bit more separation towards the end. But we've been left in a situation where lead for the top six becomes so important. Yeah, for sure. And we'll see with this new scoring system that the higher you get, like, the points really do come in. Absolutely. Well, normally in a lead competition, and we will repeat this, don't worry, Every hold is a numbered point. Things are different here in the lead, but we'll wait till we can see the wall, just because otherwise it's going to get complicated. Oh, yeah. uh, Je <laughs> what is Jesse Pills looking at there? I'm not sure, maybe admiring some of the um, architecture of our fine venue here. Jesse Bird watching backstage. Well, the athletes now come onto the stage and they get their touch to observe this route and we get to see it. Now, 
Keep an eye on this wall, because where the blue section turns to the yellow, you will see a line with a star on it. Keep an eye out for it. Hopefully our cameras will pick it up in a minute. And that is our first scoring zone. So the way this new system works is the first, however many holds, 30 or so, aren't numbered. You can't get a score for them. It only starts later on. The higher up the wall, the more of a score because it's separated into sections. The last 10 holds? How many was it? God, I've forgotten now. Hang on, we'll just have a look. Because there you go, there's the line on screen when Molly just checks that out. The line goes towards the yellow hole. That is the first scoring opportunity. So yeah, the 15 holes, 15 moves before the top, that is worth five points each. The next 10 below that are worth two, and the five below that, that yellow section, you can see there with that indicator, that's worth just one point per move. That took me a while to say, didn't it? Okay, so Simple I'll, stuff, really. I'll try to do that clearer in a sec. What it really means, basically, is the first half of the wall isn't a scoring opportunity, and the higher up you get, especially if you're into the head wall, that's where those five-point moves, those five-point holds are, that's where the biggest scoring opportunity is. So, fundamentally, it's the same as normal. The higher you get, the better score you get. Yeah, I mean, with all these changes in scorings, the goal is still the same, climb to the top of every boulder, climb to the top of every route. Absolutely, and the women now are trying to work out this route. And you said it, that that line might be a bit distracting. It's certainly something new for the athletes, isn't it? For sure. I mean, we've never really seen any tape on the wall or scoring um, visuals. When you're lead climbing, it definitely looks like there's sections of a boulder up on that wall. Uh, let's hope that the athletes aren't put off by it almost. Yeah, absolutely. It's something new for them to work out. But of course, the, the zone thing was new as well. So yeah, the athletes are having to uh, adapt, learn. And we are as well to this new system. Why is this important, you ask? Well, this is the proposed Olympic format. So this could be what we see in the Olympics in Paris in 2024. But it is a test event, this. Things can be changed and tweaked. And certainly I know there's going to be debriefs going on to look at these rules and see if they worked out the way everyone expected. So be patient, everyone. <laughs> we, are, we are into new territory here. So the scores themselves, they get added to the boulder score. So for example, Yanya is on 99.9. If she gets 10 points, you get 10 added to the 99.9, and that will be her final score. And we will have graphics on the screen to display this. So you should be able to clearly see who is winning the comp at any given moment. Now, what this means is the women who have left themselves in the top five, for example, have less to do. For sure. But if you're down the bottom like Camilla Moroni is, or Eliska Anamovska, you are going to pretty much have to top the route and hope everyone else doesn't do very well. Yeah, we've got Eliska and Camilla down on 39.5 and 3. And we've got Yanya all the way at the top with 99.9. And if you can, as you can see, you don't start scoring any points until you get to that yellow section, which is roughly halfway up the wall. So they've got a lot of moves to climb to get anywhere near that top spot. Absolutely. So there it is, that yellow hole with that star with a one on it. In fact, that's two moves because it's a match. So that is worth one and two when the athletes get to that. And then from then on, they will start scoring. Now, what I'm interested to see is whether the route setters have gone, well, OK, we'll make the bottom easy to mm -hmm. get a scoring opportunity, because, or if they've gone, well, we'll make it a bit tricky to sort of freak people out a bit, because you, you want to give it everything to get past that. Oh, 100%. Um, and usually they like to throw in a little jump or something awkward just to, you know, stress the climbers out um, and then leave less work for themselves as settlers to do with the top of the wall. But as we can see now, they've kind of, the route's been condensed into half a wall. Absolutely. And to, if you think about this even deeper, if you gain your guard, it might change the way you climb because if you fall off down the bottom, you can't throw in away your victory. So do you then be really cautious through the bottom bit? Might you then run out of time? or climb in an awkward manner. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Yanya approaches this. She'll obviously be aiming for that top, and I'm guessing the moves will get harder as the points, um, as the moves get more valuable at the top. You'd think so, really. But in a way, that's kind of what we normally have, because it tends to get harder at the top, because mm. that's where the crux is usually. Well, not the crux, it was... So, Yanya Gambra is 
currently out in front and she is down on the right completely by herself trying to get a different angle on this which is fascinating yeah interesting to see that well she's not reading with her teammate Mia and that she is off by herself clearly just checking out the holds on the underside of those black volumes we can see next to our third strike so she's looking near the top you know where Yanya's focus and eyes are set that's a really good point, yeah, because that is the sequence she would have been reading, those black volumes. So she's clearly, quite obviously, banking on herself to get that far. And look at those medals on the stage, as if the pressure wasn't there enough. I know. <laughs> and remember, Yenny Garnbret has two already in Boulder and lead. And you have to say, she is looking incredibly relaxed out there on the stage. Just focused, trying to keep loose. Last climb of this competition. Last climb of the comp, yeah, true. We've got two seconds left of this observation period. The judges are prowling and stalking because they will now hustle the ladies off the stage. It's probably one of the hardest jobs in the whole competition. Yeah, it's a moment that always makes me laugh so much. <laughs> so they leave to the backstage area and they are allowed to make notes and to draw the route if they want. And it's something we see Natalia Grossman do is she's out there with a pen and paper. Yeah. Right, so Yanya, in a way, almost has this easier. She's at the top. Yeah. The further she gets, the more she cements that lead in. For sure. It's everyone else who's really going to have to think about this. Because if you're in second, third, fourth, fifth, you have they an opportunity. Up, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. And they're all on very similar scores. So this is where we hope that the route setters have given us a nice, challenging route that will split the women. Yeah, we know how much they like to try hard but it looks like there's so many moves on this route. I'm sure there's plenty of opportunity for that to be the case. Well, as we watch some of the highlights from earlier on, this was what we watched. Bolt number one, potentially too easy, we think. The athletes all cruised through this sequence. I think only one had a slip. But Mia did have a fantastic bolt around, starting out, I think, second, but finishing in third in her weaker discipline, for sure. She didn't make the Boulder semi-final, and I'm pretty sure everyone else in the competition in today's competition did so i'm sure she'll be absolutely thrilled with that start to her competition indeed and there is hannah moyle as she worked her way through impressive climbing from her she was silver in the boulder in the individual earlier in the week so she's already got some medals for team germany great from her and there is Yanya Garbra. Almost gave us our first ever 100 points in this new digital system. Couldn't quite manage it, and we were very concerned about her back injury. She fell, held onto her back straight away, did the boulder, but walked off looking awkward. Now, I couldn't see any indication of that when she was out just now. No. Maybe she had time to see a physio. Yeah, there will be a physio about that. a short break. Right, so that's our leaderboard. Yanya Gumbret, 99.9 at the top. Then Mia Crample, 80.9. Brilliant from her, as Molly pointed out. And then Hannah Moyle, 80.9 as well. Now, this score is their total score, minus all the attempts they tried from the boulder. And the reason there are some draws in separation, that's due to their positioning coming into this comp. Which doesn't really make much of a difference to the final score, which is interesting, unless they draw again, which you oh. think would be unlikely, but yeah. we've seen it happen. So same starting order as we saw for the boulder round. Yeah, and that's important because usually it's separated by who qualified in first position, but this is a, a combination of the two results combined, so it's a bit of a mix. Now, I think we're about to get underway here. Certainly the DJ has stepped things up. That's Jenya from Ukraine. She enters the stadium for her final time. And we get a chance to find out what this route is going to be all about. This will be Jenya's last competition of the year. She's off to have surgery actually next week on her elbow. So she's climbing with an injury. So, yeah. It is. She's definitely surpassed her expectation being in this round, so I know she's just having an absolute blast being out there, soaking it all in. So her score is 80.6 as it stands, so mid-pack, which means she needs to climb high. And this first part is all about trying to get through it, not pumped, in control. Yeah, trying to get to the scoring section, so it'll be interesting to see how 
difficult this bit is. So far, looking pretty steady. Yeah, no real tricks down low. Because the route setters, of course, want to give the athletes a chance to score. So they're not going to want to shut them down too hard early on. And that's the uh, points indicated down on the bottom right. Now, the scoreboard on the left, that will update once the athletes start scoring. So it should start adding up so you can see what's going on. Jenny Kazbakova is, at the moment, cruising, as we thought she might yeah, from the bottom. pretty quickly. We're actually almost into our scoring section. There is the first score, that yellow hold. The athletes get six minutes to try to climb this route. They get run out of time, they will get timed out and not be allowed to continue. It must be quite a nice welcome change for the athletes to have a steady introduction to a route. There's nothing worse than being nervous for the first, like seeing a jump or a tricky section right at the second draw. You don't want it to be over before it's even begun. So it looks like we're in for a oh, there is a pretty bit of a move. committing move. I guess the route setters gave them all the way up to the last moment with an easy start. Yeah, and it looks like a potential rest here. So Jenya is just below the first scoring zone here. These five holds coming up, these five moves there are worth one point each. So that's one point on the score, there and there you go. can see added on, which should be in a minute. <laughs> and that's the match, so that'll be two. So she's in the scoring zone, and she will continue now. Not quite sure why it's not being added, but we'll see. Right, so high heel hook, the cross through to the match of the slope. But pretty involved climbing here. Oh, and a very good knee back from Genia. That looks pretty solid, that. Yeah, something they would have probably spotted from the ground and the observation. Yeah, definitely. So Genia is cruising into the points here. About to move into our second section, meaning she secured herself five points. There should be, and we can see that score. It will change. It's not just one. There we go. It's adding up now. Jenny climbing too quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too quickly for our tech guys. <laughs> <laughs> Some poor guy with a calculator backstage would crazy right now. <laughs> right, but she is getting towards the higher scoring zone, and it's a bit hidden in that shot, but it is to her ego. You can see it there as it moves her leg. So she's into the bigger points. And now we are into two points per move. And this is where We're things really are looking pick up. tricky. How steep is it out there, Molly? You've climbed on that one. It's steep. It is, yeah, it's quite a shock, especially once you leave the comfort of the uh, slightly less steep section to begin with. But she is making moves and looking pretty relaxed so far. Yeah, people get in behind her as her score starts to rack up. But of course, she's still not overtaking Yanni Garnbrett's score with that. And now, Will. You can see just how much work you need to do to catch up with someone who's had a fantastic bowl around. And she swings around, gets the heel locked in. The score continuing to stack up. And now she's at the top of the leaderboard with 101 points. So only just now yeah. overtakes Yanya. And she moves into point the third and final scoring zone. These are starting to be worth five points now. Looking a little bit tired. Thumb wrapping over the fingers. So a bit of a traverse coming up across that volume. Little for the feet for Yenya. Just lost a foot. Oh, she goes. A big fall. So she's in, got into the higher scoring zone and her score is 120. Now it's hard to know what that means for this week, really, because Genia is a very accomplished lead climber, having made World Cup finals. She was in our lead final the other day. So let's not make any assumptions just yet. Yeah, it's all to play for here. But straight away, what I could see was the fact that Yanya, by doing so well in the boulder, has just left herself in this brilliant position coming into the lead. But the other guys are not that far behind her, so there is huge potential for them to catch up. And of course, if Yanya slips without getting any points, well, she's immediately out of the medal positions, depending on the next two. So, all to play for. This was some replays here of her climb, just getting the rope over her face there. It's not always elegant, <laughs> sometimes moments like that. And the fall 
down she goes. The bee layer giving her lots of <laughs> lots of slack as she came yeah. down. Ooh. Look how overhanging that is. She doesn't land on the stage. She lands pretty much in the coach's area. And here we are, Mia Crampot, our next athlete out on our final lead route. Mia, an Olympian and probably specialist lead climber, though we have seen her in Boulder World Cup finals before. I would say this is where Mia comes into her own. Right, here we go. So she is underway. Mia Crample did so well in that bouldering round, left herself in a brilliant position, especially for a podium place. Forget about victory, I mean, it's just like getting a medal. And she'll be slow and steady through this first section. Not too hard, but there is that jump that we saw yeah, Jenya just have a hesitation definitely on. Definitely trickier than I anticipated. I almost didn't notice it. Here into the blue, and that is the jump coming up, that dish of a shape. And this is it, she sets herself up just before the first scoring opportunity. It's only a third of the way up the route and is resting her way through here. Trying to conserve as much energy as possible before the real work gets in. Almost reaching out. How would you approach this, Molly? If you were if you were out there seeing this I, now? Uh, good question. I think I'd try and climb through the bottom bit as quickly as possible. Get to this hold, which looks good from the ground. Um, rest up. And then I think this would be a speed climb for me. For some reason it being separated into sections. Kind of I think it makes it more obvious as to where to to break up the flow and where to, you know, how to um, focus your pacing in this route. Yeah, and there's no real reason why the, uh, the route setup suddenly step things up between sections. And yet, you, you think they must do, don't yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, more points, you would assume that the move would be harder. But yeah, I would definitely attempt to climb the bottom bit as quickly as possible, rest up and almost take it as a new route from the start of the scoring. Holds. I'd love to know whether the route setters set this within the zones or whether they just set a route and then put the zones in. Do you think that'd be the fairer way to do it? Yeah, for sure. And Mia Crampo is horizontal. Look at that shot. It's so overhanging through the blue triangle. What's her score add up to that? Up to 93.9. I think it's making our women climb quicker, this. Like, we've still got three and a half minutes on the clock and people have timed out on this wall, so... I think pace is definitely going up. Yeah, and we saw a couple of tactics change during the boulder because of those two zones, and we are seeing it, I think, in the lead as well. Still upside down, really not a proper resting position either. No, hasn't really opted to rest since she left that no-score zone, but is kind of taking a shake on every move. Yeah, climbing up. Here we are. Almost surpassing Virginia. Yeah, certainly coming close. And now she jumps to the top of the leaderboard. There we, we go. go. Our new leader. That's where we lost Virginia. Looking very comfortable still for Mia. What a comp Mia's having for this combined format. She's totally turned it up on the day that it counted. Yeah, resting on that hold that Virginia couldn't quite get her fingers over. And remember, it's not this head wall on this route is really short. It's mainly all roof. And we're approaching the final clip before the top section. So onto the head wall. So she's in the five point, so it's getting bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger. And now all she has to do is go climbing until she clips that final chain. She's yeah. still looking really steady. Looking great. So we 
Yeah, doesn't get pumped even yet. Could we see a top already? Out she goes to the right hold. Oh, and just matches that final slope. He's going to click the chains and get maximum points. Yes. And the crowd go crazy. So 175.9 is her score. That's the score from the lead added to the boulder. What a day for Mia. And with 1 minute 47 on the clock to go as well. So we know this route is very toppable. Very toppable indeed. I wonder how many tops we'll see. But it does. <laughs> but Mia Cramble is a very good lead climb. She is. And like we said earlier, it's not necessarily in order. So. Yeah, true. So. There's still a chance that people will struggle on this route. Yeah, and again, it's that pressure situation we saw in the boulder that. Backstage right now, the other women would have heard those cheers. They know she's topped the route, and they now know what they've got to do. Yeah. And that's something I hear time and time again, that it adds pressure to them. 100%. I think we all come to comps to get challenged and to see what's possible. And when you know something's possible, and, you know, when you know you have to do something, and it becomes execution rather than challenge and play, then it definitely changes the game. And I think it's less enjoyable for most. But we'll no, I, see. I'm sure we'll still see a lot of smiling faces on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, you're totally right, but do remember that it is not in order. So Mia, just because she topped it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's too easy at the moment. But we'll just wait. We're just waiting and seeing. Yeah, definitely put herself in a fantastic position for a medal. Well, hello, if you're joining us, we are nearing the end of this women's boulder and lead final. The two separate disciplines are together, and this is the Olympic format. And I'm here with Molly Thompson Smith, who's calling the actions, doing some of the maths, which is brilliant. <laughs> Trying to make predictions. And this is the backstage area. And Camilla Moroni, now she does have a lot of work to do. Only 39.3 on the scoreboard. So I think that that means only Yanya can beat me and I'll. Even if Camilla tops this route out, it's not going to be enough. So Camilla has to climb to the very end at least here. And we'll probably know this and just be going out for one last fun time. Yeah, because remember, this is one of the... Well, certainly the first and one of the only opportunities to try this new format because next year we start the Olympic qualification process. For sure. I mean, I can't believe it's starting so soon already. But I know that Camilla had some goals for this competition and she achieved most of them with making the combined final the, mo the main one, I think. And she definitely experimented with her training in the run-up to this. So it will have been a successful competition for her regardless. A good starting point for next year and with the ultimate goal being Paris, of course. Yeah, it's easy to forget how young she is. She's just really started fully coming into the senior circuit. So she is underway, approaching the first tricky part of this no-scoring zone. No points in the bottom half. If you're watching this, it is different from the single format. I wonder how much more this section will tire her out than our more established league climbers, or whether there's not more. Oh, she goes double, showing that she is the vice world champion in Boulder. Well, you said it, this is kind of a speed route, and that is going to suit her style, because as a Boulder, she might want to climb quicker. Definitely. I think Boulders tend to just go, 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 because they have got less endurance than the lead specialists. So, I mean, she's made quick work at the start. See if she keeps up the fast pace. So Camilla swings back. Her score starts creeping up. You can see the, uh, the scoreboard down the bottom left. The one, the number on the far left. That's her total. The one fixed, saying BLD. That's the boulder, and then the lead is what she's currently racking up. Just to explain that graphic. camera pans in towards her and rotates and start to get an appreciation and understanding of how overhanging this route is. Look at that. I mean, they put volumes on top of a volume on top of an overhanging I know, route. which makes it even steeper, <laughs> as if it needed to be any harder. 3D timing out there. Is it 
easy to get so disorientated in that position. Definitely. I mean, you see people spinning rounds when they're reading the routes, and sometimes we've seen inversions in the qualification rounds. We've seen paddles. Roots and boulders, they're really crossing over with every competition. And so, yeah, it can be quite tricky. A lot of the time, people will be first, and people maybe not. So, you know, it's getting harder and harder to know what on earth the route sets want you to do on the wall. <laughs> Camilla Moroni makes a pitch. She's deep into the scoring territory now, approaching the five-point moves. She is having a really good time so far. She had a top ten finish in the lead element of the European Championship, so she's clearly in the best lead shape of her life right now. Let's see what she can do. Yeah, doing really well at the moment. She comes she up to the print. Sticks it. So she's done all the 3D climbing, the overhanging stuff, and now she needs to hope her forearms can hold on to those smaller yeah, holes. We're into straight resistance climbing now. And no far, tiny feet. I'm sure everything is hurting right now. Skin, forearms. And we lose her at 104. So. A really good effort from Camilla. Something to be proud of for sure. Yeah, she's got from the bottom of the leaderboard into a current bronze medal position, but we've got a lot of athletes to go. Everyone's finding the, uh, the audience really loud. It's because they are. They are screaming down there. And myself and Molly are sitting in the grandstand itself, so I think our mics pick up a bit of that excitement. But it gives you an idea of what it feels like in the stadium. And all week, to be honest, it's just been... I mean, look, World Cups are good, and we get some fantastic ones, like Chamonix, Brion, so a big, hyped event. This feels different. Oh, something. this feels way bigger than... All of them. It feels like we've entered a new world. <laughs> we've left the comfort of our normal IFSC World Cups <laughs> and we've entered this crazy multi sport, uh, professional sports world, which is super cool. I mean, we've got people who aren't quite in the barriers um, trying to peer over and see whatever they can, see the screens. Climbing really is attracting a huge audience. It is where it belongs, and this is Camilla Moroni's last move, slipping off. As she got to the head wall. And she looks exhausted. <laughs> yeah, she's done, she's done, isn't she? Her final climb. And that head wall, turning the lip is always a tricky sequence. And the head wall itself is short here. Molly, some people have said to me, it's too much roof. <laughs> too much roof. <laughs> Where do you lie on the roof, no roof issue? I mean, I think this is a fantastic wall. Um, I'm not a massive fan of a head wall. It gets a bit too techy for me when you get on the head wall. So I'm a big fan of the roof and the gymnastic climbing that comes with steeper terrain. Um, but everyone has their preferences, don't they? Absolutely. Well, there is Chloe Collier. Someone who will enjoy the gymnastic nature that this wall lends itself to. A super powerful climber and one of our older specialists. She enters the arena. If you're new to the sport, the aim of a lead competition is to get to the top, clipping all the quick draws on the way up without falling. You can't use the rope to pull on, you just have to use those holds that are on the wall. And Chloe takes a second to re herself with the route. Belgian coach is looking a little nervous. I would be. I've never lost more sweat through my fingertips oh, watching a comp. Tell me life. about it nerve-wracking here. Well, Chloe starts with 58.9. She won't score to start with. She only scores when she gets to the yellow hole, so this is just about keeping it together. Looks left. We'll kick the foot up into the space of that volume. Steady start on this woman's route. Yeah, looks like a straight ledge from a front-on perspective. It's sloping gradually down that hole. But, I mean, we say steady. But it will definitely be trickier than most routes in your local gym, still. Even just to where it starts to score. Yeah, and people will inevitably ask about grades, and it's even harder to grade a lead route, but definitely in the range of 8B to 8C, I think, for the finals. Uh, I would agree, definitely. On site as well. Athletes, and you've got six minutes to look at it before they attempt it. Haven't practiced any of this. And we'll never get to climb it again. No, that's it. One and done. <laughs> So Chloe approaches the first 
crux of this route. And she rests well before it. She doesn't want to mess this up before the scoring zone. Gets the foot on, sets herself for the jump, pops up. Oh, and matches with the other hand. So like a semi-static, semi-jump method. Yeah, think of Camilla Moroni's leap. I know. It. The confidence. <laughs> the power. The power, indeed. Right, so she's just below the scoring zone. You can see it on the wall there with the star and the line. She'll start getting points added after this moment. She takes a long rest because she knows from here on there's no stopping. The crowd clapping in the background, spurring her on. Bumping up, locks the left heel in. Her score starts to rise, but she needs to get above 104 at the moment to get onto the podium. Big ask for Chloe Bullier. What is her endurance like after this many days competing? Definitely struggling a little more than the ladies we've seen before. But she has found this knee bar. Grimace on her face, maybe not the most comfortable position. Now, although you're not allowed to grab those quick draws, you can do what she just did, which is to make them swing. She does that in order to reach it more easily in an awkward position. Yeah, a lot of the time we think the moves are tricky, but also clipping all these quick draws can be tricky themselves. A lot of the time they are crux moves too. And you have to clip them in sequence. So you can't go up, clip one, come back down and get the other one, or realise you've forgotten to clip. You have to clip them in sequence to figure out the route. Chloe matching the heel to the hand, trying not to stand on your own fingers, which it kind of is, but now pops the fingers out. Matches again with two hands. Finally, a good rest through the steepest part of this walk. Doesn't pause there long, though. And again, grabs that quick draw, not waiting it, clips it into the rope. Still has a long way to go to improve her score. Yeah, she's still down in second position. Definitely having to fight her way through here. And you can see Amir Krampel, the only athlete to top out at the moment to finish the route. Yeah, well, Chloe Corey has got a grit. She does indeed, and she is fighting already. Kicks the left foot over to try to get the foothold. I mean, she bumped herself up a couple of positions, but most of those athletes still left to come out and fight for their own points. It shows how important that boulder round was for all of them. And with a high scoring boulder round, mistakes punished severely now as we move into yeah, the lead. 100%. Well, a crowd crosses the skies above our stadium and it is boiling hot here. That's Chloe Collier, this is the replay. Her first move, the half static, half dino jump, coming up, keeping the left hand on and then releasing it. Holding the swing nicely, not cutting loose with the feet. The crowd. Celebrate Chloe one more time as she returns. And look at her face, she had to fight throughout this sequence. And I thought she was gonna go a lot earlier. Yeah, she definitely continued on and fought hard for quite some moves just before reaching the final change in score scoring section yeah that pink line indicates it and it is different from the ifsc world cups travel the globe different system on display here on this wednesday afternoon and we've only got one more day of climbing ahead of us tomorrow it's the turn of the men in the same format, same scoring system. And Chloe there gets congratulated. How nice is it the athletes get to gather down there on the front and support each other? It's so lovely. And I mean, all these women are tired. They all know what the other has been through and they all know how cool it is to be in this, to experience this all together. And so it's so nice that climbing is a sport where everyone just wants the best for each other. So Eliska Adamowska from the Czech Republic comes out and she didn't have the best of bouldering rounds, but she's now back in her element on the lead wall. 
definitely where she feels most comfortable. We saw her in finals the other day. She's a World Cup winner. So I think she can definitely take some confidence from her recent lead performances into this route. A left shoulder strapped up, I think, since the boulder. She's got some treatment on that. She's right down to the bottom again, similar to Chloe. Low 30 score. She can't high catch Mia, unfortunately, but she can move into second place if she tops this group. She doesn't even have to top. So that's what she needs to do. She's got the quality to do it. I think a knee in there. Yeah, making us look a little awkward. One of those great things about climbing, whenever I started, you were told, don't use your knees, it's bad form. Oh. And you forget about it when you're a pro, anything it's goes. definitely a technique. <laughs> Glad you said that, I use it quite a lot. I used one today. <laughs> so Eliska rests. Ooh, slight hesitation, she went out to that pinch. Not the smoothest climb through this bottom section that we've seen, but she is a specialist lead climber, so I'm sure she'll be able to recover from our final blue hole before we reach the flooring section. Yeah, and recovery is interesting, because they've only had about 30 minutes from the it's end of the boulder really to get going. Long. Especially for athletes like Elishka, who had so many attempts on the last two boulders, I'm sure they're feeling that now. Yeah, good point, she's running back and forth at the end. Loads of frantic goes. Look how well she does that first crop moves. Head back, relaxing. Back. And I think that's what separates lead climbers from combined such boulder specialists is they're really able to relax on the lead group. And that is so important. Being able to switch on, switch off almost and really make the most of those recovery positions. You notice a white line drawn on the hold there. That's a tick mark put in by the judges. In chalk, you can see a foot on it there. And sometimes they stick that in on a blind hold just to give a hint to the athletes about where to aim for. Yeah, we love Level's so, so high for these women in terms of difficulty on this route. She bumps up the left hand to the slopers. So much tension through that tiny score. And takes a cut the beginning of our very gymnastic, athletic sleep section. So here we go. How much has she got left in her arms? She snatches a little bit of that quick draw awkwardly behind her head. Quite a stretch for that quick draw, but she looks very comfortable in this knee bar position. A keen rock climber may be more comfortable than others using this technique, because that's where we usually see something like this. Yeah, the athlete's not allowed to use knee pads like they can outside. It's against the rules, so you have to use skin, or in her case, leggings, in order to just press your knee into there. It can be painful. Lisa gets the heel, which will now rock upwards. The most overhanging part. This is where Chloe Pullier found a good rest. And despite all the work that she's done, she's still only on 17 points on this lead group. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? it? I just it want to really give her more is. points. <laughs> but as we know, the higher you get, the more you are rewarded, the more fruitful each move becomes. Yeah, and she could break into that top three. So medals on the line for her here as she goes upwards. There is Chloe Collier's full point. Climb just before this. These quick draws extended through the steep section in order to minimise the rope drag. You don't want to be being pulled down by the weight and the friction between the rope and the surface of the wall or through those quick draws. Which is into the five point zone now. Right bend in the elbow, signaling some fatigue, but she's still looking relatively controlled. So let's see if she'll pass Renya. Because we lost on this move, I believe. And she finds another knee bar. Ooh. Yeah, kind of knee scrubbing away. Yeah. Wow, oh, dropping down to three fingers in a drag. Definitely showing some signs of fatigue. It yeah, drags all the way for her, those fingers open, not crimped and closed up. And look at this footwork as she crosses through and under. Still really smooth climbing from Alicia. Oh, OK, maybe she is a bit more relaxed than we thought. Yeah, I think she's enjoying herself out there. This is her element, and she's already into a bronze medal position. Straight arms to rest. No more clips until we reach the final hole. Final well, that, that fall looks super scary. It is safe, though, right? It's very safe, yeah. That's why 
where we have the rope and all these quick draws. Right, pressure on. She's got a minute on the clock, which will be enough time. Is she is battling? She's so oh, close to silver. Section. She is looking. She's got that hold. Oh. Oh. She reached that hold, decided it wasn't very good, searched for something else, but she just pits Virginia to the silver medal for now. So there you go, 90 uh, score on the lead, 39.5 on the boulder, 129.5 in total, and a silver medal at the moment. This is this is tenser than normal. It really is. It changes with every yeah, climber. Yeah, it does. Because <laughs> you know it's so important to break into the next zone to get through that crux sequence. And Definitely. Well, this was down low on the first scoring opportunity. A weird flick with the hands. Yeah. Some crazy angles from our cameraman showing just how steep this wall is and how 3D the climbing is on this route. Yeah, you can always tell by looking at the, the way the quick draws are hanging, tall bags and hair, yes. and they're all sort of out from the wall. Yes. So she reached out quite a blind crimp, the one she fell on. Definitely not a very good hold, especially when you're that bumped. She tried to readjust the feet and the fingers were not, well, the hold that her fingers were on, not good enough to do that, and that's her coach, but... <laughs> Looking pretty pleased with that performance. Yeah, she did what she needed to do there. She had to climb high, didn't have the best boulder round, and in her specialism, nearly topped out. Thanks to the crowd for all the support. And joins the other girls on the very comfortable looking chairs. They look good, don't they? They do. Yeah. I'll be thinking that. And in the shade. <laughs> Jesse Pilts is up next. Someone who has won world championships before she has competed in the Olympics. She is no stranger to the pressure of this moment as she walks out towards those medals. Can she pick one up here today? World Cup winner, world champion, world games winner this year and silver medalist from the other day here at the European Championships. I think we could see another top there. Yeah, she's certainly got it in her, but she needs to keep calm through the bottom. Obviously down in eight because of that. In fact, she hasn't climbed yet. She did well in the boulder, put herself right in contention with an 80.6. Can't quite catch Mia, but can definitely aim for a medal. Regardless. Yeah, good spot. So. Mia Crampel, what a performance from her. She's going to be sitting pretty down there on the road. Sitting very pretty down in that chair. Happy with her performance. I mean, there's nothing more she could have done, really, is no, there? Exactly. It's like perfection with that point. You just have to say, well, look, I've done what I can do. And then it's down for everyone else. So Jesse stretches up. Crimp looks bad to us at home, but it's a good hold for these athletes especially with the angle of the wall. Ooh, creeps out towards it. And now that we've really pissed the Jesse. She'll take a sec to rest it. It's a good position. Not wonderful feet, but the hands are great. Doesn't rest long. This is the thing, though, with the low rest, is you don't really need it for that No, point. I think you can get sucked into thinking you need it, but really, I've not been on the wall for very long, and the climbing will not have been hard for Jesse. He was used to find purposes on those plastic holds and there's a good opportunity to take some of the pressure off the arms. And although not a full shake out and a rest sometimes, it's just enough to recover. Micro shaking. It doesn't opt for the knee bar but has the toe hook in instead using the top part of the foot. I wonder whether she has missed it when reading or has decided she doesn't need it whilst climbing. And she's climbing quite confidently and quickly, so maybe she just didn't think she needed it. Yeah, didn't even seem to glance at it. But rests here for a little longer. Already moving up the leaderboard, showing what a good boulder round she had. Not far into the scoring section of this route. Yeah, 125 needed to bump Zonia Kaspakova off that third place position. Comes underneath the triangle now. Underclings from her. Very pretty 
precise, efficient climbing from Jesse here. Almost into our third take section. Yeah, so she approaches the podium positions I'm from sure now on. Up to fourth already. Look at this score, brilliant. And these holds are worth five from now on, so she'll be racking up the score quickly. But this traverse is a bit blind, it's awkward, and it's still not vertical. Swings the left leg out and round to steady. And second position now. Molly said she won't be jumping up for Mia Crample, but she will want to put some distance between herself and the next competitor. Yeah, 100%. There's still Hannah and Yana to come, so positions are not fixed and not final. So down to the crimp. Resting in this position, back and forth she goes. Crazy, resting this high up on the roof on holds this bad. And she has that final quick draw in at the very beginning of the head roll, meaning she's all go to the final hold and the final quick. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit awkward reaching that high above your head, but I think in this position she was in, because she could find the rest, she knew that she could make a big move and then drop back down. Yeah, for sure. Click, rest a little bit, and then jump to the top. So here we go, Jesse Pilts in the final section into the head wall, that vertical part of the wall. Towards the top, she's got to finish on the last hold and click the quick draw. Still looking pretty controlled. Climbing with great technique still, showing she can't be too tired. And chalking up right before the last move. There is always a sting in the tail in these routes, though, and this is it, but steady from Jessie Pilt, so she matches. Needs to click the quick draw in order to finish the route and does maximum score from Jesse Pilts. Wave to the crowd. Probably quite pleased, maybe a little bit disappointed. Now, the reason she's finished but isn't on the top of the podium is because of the score from the boulder. It just mathematically wasn't possible, so she is in second silver position, but... Look, she did everything she had to do and could do on this route. 100%. It just goes to show how tight it is in the boulder round and how every attempt really makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's funny, with someone's quite blasé with falls, but right. now you realise how important it is. I guess this format has changed that before. It, there was a focus on just making sure you got to the top, you got the zone holds. It didn't really matter how many tries, really, but now it really is every, every go matters. So, two athletes remaining. Germany's Hannah Moyle and Slovenia's Janja Garnbrett out last we're here this afternoon. We're in Munich for the European champs, and we're reaching the crescendo of this women's combined format competition. We have our climbing crowd, and we also have our adopted volleyball crowd <laughs> cheering on our climbers from the volleyball stadium. I love how they're watching, it's brilliant. It's amazing. Forget volleyball, come yeah. do this instead. <laughs> No, big respect to the volleyball, big of respect. course. Yeah. But climbing is exciting. Definitely. So that was Jessie Pilts topping out her coaches from Austria. They have an amazing facility in order to train in Innsbruck. Huge climbing wall there. Amazing coaches too. Killian Fischer. I don't know how many titles he won, but it was a lot. <laughs> I get a little bit starstruck when he walks past me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Get all so shy. <laughs> so that's our medals: gold in the middle, bronze, and silver. And they're great-looking medals. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And the women relaxing, their job's done. It's just sort of up to everyone yeah, else now to put performances in. Loud, it says. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go, everyone. You've been told. And if you're at home watching this, scream at your screens, because Hannah Moyle from Germany walks out through those curtains, and I've just got goosebumps as she enters the stage. And I'm sure she won't forget this experience for quite some time. Her teammate, Alma Besvata, looking on. Did well, she did in the boulder to push through a shoulder or recovery from a shoulder injury. Quite the comeback comp for her as well. So Hannah Moyle is off. She gets underway, climbing through this first initial section. Again, not meant to be too tricky for the athletes, as we 
still not in any scoring zone, but definitely feels to tire them out. So she's up towards the blue volumes. That's the pinch we saw Eliska hesitate on, and it's not great, you can see from that angle. Hannah is rocketing at the start of this room. Misses the clip a little. And a bit of a fumble. Right, Hannah sets herself. She's good at these moves, which is really low on this, but then creeps up to almost do it statically. And now it's going to be interesting, because theoretically, if Hannah tops this out, she's going to draw with Mia Crample, but will get bumped into first position due to count back her position. I guess maybe due to attempts in the ball around, or count back to the previous qualification. Let's see, so she gets the heel in. And that's the knee bar, which actually from that angle makes you realise maybe why Jessie... Oh, I don't know, it's pretty good. Still a long stretch out to that quick draw. It has been extended, but it is still quite a way away. It is, yeah, that knee bar, you want as much skin as possible, and ideally to be right underneath the knee bar hold, and she's almost scrubbing it, really. She didn't hang around too long. So here we go, out to the Prince, gets a heel, slips down slightly, but didn't have that awkward position that Chloe got in. Animal climbing quickly and fluidly. Dynamics sort of bounce in the way she climbs. Yeah, she always floats. Yeah, it's really efficient when you get it right. Crowd are getting so into this as you'd expect. Yeah, very well timed collapse with the music. Right, Hannah approaches the end of this route now, but she's got this tricky traverse to come. And the left foot comes off, making that move probably more tiring than Hannah would have liked. So she's in bronze, but she's still not guaranteed a medal with Yanya to climb. Bent arms, she's definitely fighting a bit harder now. Yeah, here we go. She needs to go above Jesse Pilks to get a definite medal here. Crowd cheering her on. She crosses under. Anna Moyle. Can she add another medal to that collection? Oh, she hasn't clipped that quick draw, though, Molly, down low. So she's got to reach oh, under. And she's not going for it. Comes she down. It's a huge ball. So, a 1-6-5. She could theoretically still be bumped down. So that means we have Mia and Jessie with guaranteed medals already. Yeah, and the smile's her. And now, yeah, you can see that from Hannah. She <laughs> has left this in the hands of Yanya Garnbrett, which is not the greatest decision. No, Obviously, she gave it her all. it's position you want to be <laughs> Yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> position, not decision. <laughs> Hannah Moyer, well, she comes out. Gives a big wave to the crowd. Looking a little frustrated. Well, we'll see some replays, I'm sure, in a sec. Hugs at the moment as she's going to nervously sit there and watch Yanya climb. The Hannah is so young, and not to be patronising or anything, but she definitely has a long career ahead of her. And, I mean, she's off to a great start. Absolutely. So, Hannah Moore, a lot to come. As do you. Oh, thanks, Come on, you're only 24. <laughs> you're making me feel ancient. <laughs> so, this was... Hannah down low. I thought she was going a bit low on that jump, but she did it lovely. And this is this clip with that knee bar that wasn't the best. She had to fight See for that this. finger just searching for that quick draw. Yeah, and closed her eyes a bit when she got it in. That might have cost her a bit of energy bit of later relief. on. Yeah. Relief that she'd finally got the draw in. But yeah, I didn't realise she hadn't clipped that final quick draw, which meant that, I mean... She, she wouldn't have been able to keep climbing to the top anyway. She'd have been given a score where the judges deemed she could no longer clip that final quick draw. So from. Why, why wouldn't she have clipped that quick draw? I'm too tired, I guess. So she's at that point, she's just making the decision to get the points? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there comes a point on your, your climb on the route where you know that, you know, it's, it's either get the quick draw in and have a lower score or just keep climbing past the quick draw and hope for a higher score. And Hannah definitely made that decision there. 
that was, that fall down, spinning through the air above this Munich crowd. It's a tricky slap up, and she was just going for the points at that moment. Thoughts of topping the route gone, knowing, knowing the burn was building. And a bit of disappointment because she isn't guaranteed a podium place yet. And that it will be a close one. It will be. Well, we are seconds away from watching a lady walk onto the stage who has pretty much achieved every accolade there is in competition climbing. There is IFSC president watching on. He'll be awarding some medals later as he gives a wave to the crowd. Marcus Galaris there. Well, here we go. Janja Garnbrecht. She's an Olympic gold medalist. Multiple World Cup winner. She's cruising through the IFSC lead season. And now, as she has done many times in the past, she walks out in the last position in front of the crowd. And Molly, I mean... This is Yanya's to lose at this moment. It really is. It is just another day at the office for her. And um, she's put herself in such a good position after that boulder round. So close to that perfect score. And yeah, she knows this route is toppable. She knows it's been done. And I mean, if other people can do it, Yanya can definitely do it. Yeah, Mia Krampel, she had a great performance to top that out. She's guaranteed a medal. And Yanya, though, well, she will want gold. She's already got two this week. Yeah. Can she make it the triple? Crossing through, no scores down low. So that score, that 99.9 that she achieved in the boulder with almost a perfect round. will only start when she gets to the yellow holds. Climbing quite conservatively, I'd say. Definitely less risky than we're used to with Yanya. This is it, she could slip now and all of it would be gone. Yeah. All of that work in boulder for nothing. As I said that, I realised the momentous in yeah. this section. <laughs> it's huge, it's huge, these holes. I was worried whether it would sort of lose some tension not having scoring, but actually I think it kind of ramps it up a bit because yeah, it could all just so. go. For sure. But she's clean through the first crux, easy now, and then she will start to score. Looking very relaxed. Yanya will pause. She's very good at timing things, although the clock hasn't even vaguely been an issue so far. No, we've seen the women have climbed much quicker than we're used to on this route. Good to be able to see the whole lead wall dedicated just to one route. Usually during World Cups, there's two on there, the men and women's. Ooh, Yanya just bicycling the legs. I don't know whether she'll use this knee bar. Like she's trying to, yeah. No, just moves straight through like Jessie did. Oh no, maybe it's a rope. Oh, it's a toe. Ops for a toe hook. Similar to Jessie? Yep. I mean, still looks fairly relaxed, head back. So, deciding the toe is the way to go. She shakes out as she gets into the most overhanging section. Climbing very carefully for Anya. It is really hers to lose. Skipping out holes. <laughs> she is right. Jumping up the leaderboard. Yeah, I think the points. when she gets towards the top, you might see a bit of the Anya we know, that sort of more fluid, flicky style. Right now, she needs to make sure of every hold as she approaches the last high-scoring section of this route. She's definitely climbing pretty controlled, locking everything in just that little bit more. 122.9, 124 now. Needs 165 total, 0.9 or more take a bronze medal and she's coming up to Hannah Moyle's score now. Out towards the pinches. This is where things start to get a bit blind. Still very easy work for Hannah. You can see out. the root set has blocked that right hand, making it even worse. 
Nyanya, yeah, yeah. look at that. Resting. She, well, she rested, but I think she had a little word with herself there. Like, she's human. We know she feels these big moments, and this is the biggest. She's close to the triple in the European Championships. Looks down at the clock to make sure of the timing. And she knows there's not much room for mistake here. This format does not allow for any of that. Here she goes. There won't be much stopping from now. She crosses over with the right into the peaches. Each move precise from Yanya Gambra. Getting that final clip that Hannah kind of didn't quite manage to get in, and she is already into a medal position. Yeah, so Hannah Moyle bumped down. Disappointment from her as we look. She's still cheering her on, though. Really good to see. So how high can she go? What colour will that medal be? And there we go, confirmation of it. Yanya Garbrett will take the triple. Three gold medals in one week of comp climbing and a jump to finish things off. And Yanya Garbrett is your champion here this afternoon once more. Done with style. Oh, it's so good to see. Well, Jesse disappointed, European obviously. But, I mean, you... What do you say, Molly? I've run out of the words. What do you say about Yanya? I mean, yeah, there's not much left to say other than just simply one of a kind. You've got to say, throughout that boulder comp and that lead climb, there wasn't really a moment where I got that nervous for Yanya Garnbrett. Maybe down low when she still could have not got onto the podium, but she looked in control. Yeah, the whole way through. It was hers to lose, really. It was, once again, she wins, and she celebrates with the crowd who are on their feet clapping. For the third time this week. Third time. Well, if Yanya Garnbrett had a plan going into this one, I think she's ticked all the boxes that she wanted to. Yanya Garnbrett! Another, oh, <laughs> another three golds to add to the collection. Yanya celebrates with her, and Hannah, that's nice to see. She was bumped down because of Yanya, but still celebrating. Well, that is the end of our afternoon's climbing, Molly. Yeah, it was quite an afternoon, wasn't it? It really was, yeah. Let's just see Yanya's climb once more. She took that really unique approach to Regal and Root going way out yeah. to the side. Obviously trying to see something the others hadn't or didn't. And then look, this was the heels down low, the toe instead of the knee bar. There wasn't really a moment once we got into the scoring section where Yanya made any mistakes. And solid all the way into that pocket. Big moves through from Jesse Piltz. Clapping. So we see Yanya topping out in the background. <laughs> this was just below the head wall on the traverse and the small feet. She took a moment to herself up there just incredible that she has the capacity to even do that. Just to find something solitary when everyone is watching, <laughs> all the TV cameras, and yet yeah. she could still turn and just have a breath. On what's, you know, one of the most difficult routes she can climb this year, she's still got the space to have a word with herself. And that was a celebration at the top from Yanya Garnbrett. Great effort from her. Well, we will return tomorrow for the men's format the boulder and lead together with this scoring system that certainly perhaps has a few teething issues but will be developed before the Olympics improved. So thank you for watching everyone. We will return tomorrow. My name is Matt Groom and I've been joined by the ever brilliant Molly Thompson Smith in the commentary box. Molly, you won't be with me tomorrow. Unfortunately not, but I will be watching. Awesome. Well thank you, Molly. That's our leaderboard. We will return tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, for the men's final. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.
We need a big smile. Lied Finale. Janja Garnbrett, once again, congratulations. It seems to be your championships. It's a new format and you are the first European champion. How you feel? Um, it definitely feels incredible. Um, I, I love Munich. I always loved coming back and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it here. This is a new format today. We saw it the first time. It will be like that in Paris in two years. You like it? Is it good? You won the old format at the Olympics in Tokyo. Now it seems like you are ready for, for the new format in Paris in two years as well. Yeah, definitely is uh, better than the one in Tokyo. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's nice. Um, yeah, I guess we're ready. <laughs> What are you doing with three medals from Munich? You have a whole room in your house where you put all your medals. How are you going to celebrate? You're still going to bed early tonight or is it over with early sleeping? Is it party time now for you? Because it's done. It's over with early sleeping. <laughs> no, you, you are a party girl or never a party? Come on, tell us. Three championship titles. Um, yeah, I am a party girl. <laughs> <laughs> the final words from this championship to the three times uh, European champion. You like the whole thing, you like this atmosphere at all. It was great for you when you summarize it. Um, yeah, I liked it so much. Um, the crowd was absolutely phenomenal the whole uh, week here. Um, today was, uh, today was uh, very mentally tough. Um, so with the support of the crowd, it was easier to compete. So once again, thank you very much for the support. Once again, we say thank you very much. Three times European champion, Janja Gambrin.
Ceremony, Women's, Boulder and Leagues. Siegerehrung, Bouldern und Lead, Frauen. Die Nationalhymne 
von Slowenien. Paris 2022 hier bei diesem European Championships. Ich glaube, das ist richtig gut gelaufen. Glückwunsch an alle Medaillengewinnerinnen. Wir sagen Dankeschön an Lukas und Jule, an alle Volunteers. Das war ein großartiger Tag. Wir sehen noch mal, wie es morgen weitergeht. Morgen das Gleiche. Bei den Männern hat man auch um 15 Uhr die Tore werden rechtzeitig geöffnet. Es gibt dann auch noch die Männer. Das ist ein Riesenschmuck. Weiter und dann wird die
2, die High Zone. Low Zone und High Zone werden unterschieden. Erste Zone, die man erreichen kann, ist die Low Zone mit drei Punkten. Dann die High Zone. Die nächsten drei Punkte hat sie auch schon drin.
Paris 2022 hier bei Linz.
Right now, we need a big smile.